As the days wore on, they became almost routine in their lunacy. I must confess that I too began to view this ritualistic, nocturnal lifestyle as normal. At times, it even seemed fun. Especially when Lazarus would loosen up a little and host what he called barbecue night tactical grape soda learning games. On my call. Here we go. Hut. Good boy. Yeah, fuck him. You dying anyway. Yeah. All right, hot shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at you. Fucked up again. No 45 degree angle. Why is the reason for this extensive training for them? Well, come on, man. You know we're about to be a police state. I want my boys to be able to retaliate, organize. And who exactly are they fighting against? One another. For my affection. I love flying. The airport is my second home. That's my greatest passion because it, it adds a, a third dimension to your life. People who limit themselves to the ground are, are missing out a lot uh, because the, the world is just completely different up there and uh, it's just total freedom. What I'd usually be doing right now is grabbing my friend Chris and Ethan and we'll just go out to a local pizza joint. We'll just go be teenagers. We just eat there and then we'll go to Walmart. Because that's the thing to do around here is go to Walmart. That's considered a hot date around this area. The rednecks will take their girlfriends to Walmart. And this is one of the only places I can come and buy pony merch. I have a, a friend in there. He lets me know when the stuff comes in. I'm waiting to receive a text for that white Celestia. I'm excited for her. It's fun to drive a Mercedes because you, you're usually the only one that has one, especially an old one like this one. I get a lot of weird looks from the rednecks because you know they're expecting me to be driving a big truck or you know, I'm supposed to be competing with them somehow. And I, I don't see the fun in that. My first exposure to My Little Pony was in a uh, an internet video collaboration. And this guy, he had created a collaboration of the good shows that got a start in 2010. and. I saw the, the ponies on there and I'm, I just couldn't get them out of my head. Like something just caught my eye about them. I don't know why, so I figured, well, I'll give them a chance. I gave it a shot and I was hooked. I was just sitting here, I was just living day to day, you know, in the house, uh, you know, just trying to get by, doing work for my father here and there. And I didn't really have anything to look forward to, just, you know, to see the sunset and, uh, that was it, you know, go to the next day. As soon as ponies came into my life, I was like, wow, I never want the day to end, you know? It's just such a positive outlook on things, and now I have something to look forward to. Here we have a strong stereotyping that if you aren't extremely masculine and chauvinistic, then you're homosexual, and in this area, homosexuality is also looked down upon, so I guess it comes hand in hand that if you watch a show that's target audience was children, small girls, then suddenly maybe you're homosexual and then it's a reason to hate you. If you choose to be a brony in the Appalachian Mountains, you're going to have problems. You might get beat up, you could get cussed at, you could get things thrown at you. It's not an easy thing. One night there was a, uh, a few rednecks standing around my car. Uh, there was a truck in front of my car behind it so I, I couldn't move and they had tire irons, baseball bats. I had just got uh, custom decals uh, for my windows. Uh, on my back window, I had a large Celestia and a large Luna, and they were kneeling up together, forming an archway, and it was just the coolest thing. Uh, and they went right to my back window, hit it a few times, and you know, smashed it. This guy, he ran to his truck and came back out uh, with his rifle he had been hunting with. Uh, I got pretty scared at that point. And, uh, you know, he was playfully aiming it at me like, you know, you got to stop this pony, little gay girly shit, you know, and uh, that's what he pointed right at me. And I was, I, I freaked out, uh, you know, I slammed the car in reverse and, you know, just managed to get the whole side of this car just bashed up. And then I come home and then, my, of course, my father saw the damage to the car and he was 
Uh, he was a little angry, and I just had to explain to him, like, oh, I ran off the road or something, or, you know, to try to cover it up. Do you know what really bugs me? Bronies. Amen. I got something to say. The drums are wrapped in black crepe. They're muffled as you can hear. And the pace of the drummers is so slow. 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 The drummers is so slow. The pace of the drummers is so slow. Look, brother, there's a new groove. There's a new thing. It's down to the nitty gritty. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Barbecue Night. That's right. In Long, it's Barbecue Night Tactical Grape Soda Learning Games. It's Shinjuku Station's new podcast about randomness. Random stuff. And um, I'm not alone tonight. I've got a cast, a, a panel, I should say, of experts and non-experts um, that I brought along to talk about our subject, which is none other than bronies, uh, the diehard adult fans of My Little Pony. Um, just to give a little backside, a, a little insight as to what this show is about, uh, <clears throat> this podcast is pretty much as random as its title. The name of it derives from uh, a pastime enjoyed by Tropic Thunder's Lincoln Osiris, as you saw in the intro, um, the African-American Vietnam War vet portrayed by Kirk Lazarus, the Caucasian-Australian <laughs> character actor played by Robert Downey Jr., who is Iron Man, a moneyed and titanium American. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> each episode of Barbecue Night will assemble an assortment of panelists as we come together to discuss a different topic each week, whether it be about a recent event in the news or something far less important, like who would win a fight between Superman and Son Goku. That, that shit is important. Let me, let me change my mind about that. But <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> people with opposing viewpoints will be brought together with the goal to hold respectful, respectful discourse and hopefully along with the audience walk away with a, a little bit more insight about the opposing person's point of view. Um, on today's episode, we delve into the sordid world of the brony, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, which is the adult fan of My Little Pony Friendship, Friendship is Magic the uh, fourth generation of My Little Pony. And like Keo from Mobile Suit Gundam Age, we're going to try to find understanding between them and the non-bronies that persecute them. <laughs> but on tonight's episode, I've got some panelists with me. And uh, those panelists are Eric, who you guys know as uh, Crestborn, or Eggman, that's E-G-G-M-4-N on, um, sorry, E-6-6-M-4-N on Twitter. And um, also along with him is a friend of his uh, who's also, uh, a, you guys, it's no secret that Eric is a brony. So that's the, he was target number <laughs> one for me to get him on the show. Um, also, uh, he has a friend that's come along with him and his name is Devin, um, who uh, runs uh, Pink Dollar Comics. And I spelt that wrong. Let me fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fix that shit. Oh my God. Lie. Live, boy. That's, 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 the, that's the, uh, the thrill of doing the show live, man. The fuck ups get seen, man. Good shit. Good shit. That's comics. I'm Ron Burgundy. Uh, exactly. That's that's comics with an X, not I C S. So, <laughs> uh, peep that. But um, many thanks to Devin for coming out tonight, and uh, make sure you follow him on Twitter and uh, peep his website, which is Pink Dollar Comics, and that's uh, C O M I C S uh, dot com. Um, also, along for the ride as well is uh, one of our non Brony panelists, which is uh, my man Doctor from the S S A A podcast. You guys know this guy by now. <laughs> He's got it'd a million weird, websites. It'd be weird if he don't. So. <laughs> I was like, wow, how ineffective was I those last couple of weeks, months even? <laughs> it's like you have to reintroduce, reintroduce yourself every time. It's crazy. Awesome. But <laughs> welcome, sir, to the stream. And, of course, your final panelist is none other than yours truly, Sobro Ryu, your host in this episode of uh, Barbecue Night. 
And um, tonight's hashtag, for you guys who don't know and want to um, add comments and have your tweets seen on stream, tonight's hashtag is Barbecue Brony. That's BBQ Brony. So use that hashtag, and I'll see it, and I will uh, try to get that on stream during the session. And if it's a question, I'll um, ask our panel it during the show. But um, welcome, panel. Um, Eric, how are you doing tonight? I put the bro in Brony, and me and Devin are here to love and tolerate the shit out of you. <laughs> thank you for having us on. <laughs> well, well, thank you for coming, you and all your Broniness. <laughs> I like how he begins by like, cutting a promo on us. Hey, I exactly. got to, man. I he, have to. He came prepared, man. He came prepared. That's why, that's why I drafted him. <laughs> but, um, Devin, man, how are you doing tonight, man? Welcome to the show. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, tell us about um Pink Dollar Comics, man. Oh lord, Pink Dollar Comics <laughs> is uh, it's a studio that produces the same sort of comics you grew up with, except the uh, the predominant characters are all LGBT. Awesome, awesome, man. It's good to see. Uh, it's good to see that uh, that medium embrace those stories, man, and uh, and and to see that you're putting that out there. I mean, there's there's an audience for it. I'm certain. I mean, how how, how have you found that the uh, the reception has been for for your label uh, well things are so new right now and uh, especially with the traditional uh, market that's out there whenever you think of lgbt comics the first thing you ever think of is yaoi and of course women in japan enjoy yaoi for a completely different reason than what women over here enjoy it or what lgbt people lgbt people are expecting in comics so it's kind of new and breaking ground and something that's never really been done before so i'm still learning as i'm going Oh man! Well, I, I think it's pretty awesome that you're doing that, and I wish you all the success in the world, man. And, oh, yeah. and you're very welcome, Doc. Man, how you doing tonight, man? Oh, uh, pretty good, pretty good. And uh, like in between recording sessions, in between live streaming sessions, I've I've been streaming way too much. I've realized that. I, <laughs> there were days in the week I was like, wait, I should be going out. Where the fuck am I home? <laughs> you were living in front of a mic, sir. Yeah, like it's way more often than I should, and, be, and like and that's just like a day, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I have another podcast recording or do to do, or I have to be on a, another spot, or I why am I not pay, getting paid for the shit? <laughs> but no, it's, yeah, it's, like, it's it, I'm usually pretty good about it. It's, it's I have fun doing it, and I think that's all that matters to me right now. Nice. Yeah, like every time every time I, I follow I follow him on Twitter, and so I'll scroll through every like 15 or 20 minutes or something just to see if there's any like anything going on, and he'll either post. A one-word tweet, which I have to try to devise what the hell that one-word tweet <laughs> turns to. No context <laughs> at all, man. No context. <laughs> I fuck a hashtag. You, I'm always out of context. <laughs> <laughs> or he's always streaming something, and I'm just like, I wish I could be there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, man, um, many thanks to everybody for coming out on the panel tonight. And, of course, our, our subject tonight... Our bronies, and um, basically, I I would like to ask, and I, I should I should say that our, our panel is pretty much divided in half. Um, Eric and Devin, of course, are, are pro brony, and um, I wouldn't say that uh, Doc and myself are anti brony. We're not. We're just we're just not bronies. So you know, I don't know really much about the scene except for some of the YouTube videos I've come across, like the one you just uh, saw open up the stream with. Uh, with the young man who uh, I guess uh, had a bit of a rough time in his small town for being a brony man, that's that's pretty that, that sucks to be to be treated in that manner. But um, you know, it, it's it, it's it's weird when when um, when people don't understand the fandom that you're into, and um, it's hard to get that across, I guess, for him. And and hopefully that documentary will will be seen by a lot of people, so that way they can you know at least have some kind of inkling to understand exactly why he enjoys the show and what he sees in it. So. And that's why we have Eric and Devin on the show tonight. And I'm sure Doc and I will be rich with questions. But <laughs> <laughs> the first half of the show will be me asking them uh, pretty much questions and bringing up certain things. And then the second half of the show, when we take a small break, Eric will come back and hit us with, uh, he'll drop some gems on us. Let's, let's just put it at that. <laughs> but um, I guess I should open it up with, uh, I, I guess my introduction to My Little Pony was when I was a kid. Um, back in the late 80s, you know, there was the age of uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe, and, and Hasbro pretty much ruled the day when it came to toys. Um, and to me, My Little Pony was like that counterpart to Transformers and G.I. Joe, where girls strictly play with My Little Pony and dudes play with Transformers and, and G.I. Joe. Years later, I'd find out that girls collected Transformers and G.I. Joes as well, and that would mind F me. But. <laughs> <laughs> 
sense. But um, yeah, uh, My Little Pony was that little cartoon that I would never watch. I would just immediately skip on TV and and just go about my business. But um, I just I looked at it at that for years. It was just a, a girl's toy, and that was it. And um, my exposure as a kid pretty much just ingrained that into my DNA. But um, a guy named Craig McCracken came along, uh, and I, I, this is this is connected but not connected. Craig McCracken, you guys might know, was is the creator of Powerpuff Girls, and um, on that project, I, did is that when he met Lauren Faust, or was he already with her at that time? Uh, yeah, I think I think he was already with her during this point. And she was a big part of that production. Did she come up with the, some of the character designs for that show yes. and whatnot? Yes. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She was a part of that. Well, Lauren Faust. That's that's when I was exposed to her artwork was through Powerpuff Girls when that show aired on Cartoon Network uh, years ago, and then um, later on she would you know work on other shows like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends with her husband Craig McCracken, um, and then eventually she would get the shot of uh, developing her own show around the uh, IP of My Little Pony. I guess when Transformers Animated came out, or with the resurgence of Transformers toys, Hasbro saw a chance of bringing back My Little Pony to a new audience, and so they they charged Lauren with the task of uh, developing a cartoon around their new product line, and that's exactly what she did. Um, and uh, the show is uh, developed around the fourth generation, the fourth attempt of My Little Pony. Um, I I guess it came around the time that the Hub came around. Yeah, it was one of the launch uh, programs on the hub besides uh, Transformers Prime and, um, yeah, that other one. (laughs) (laughs) That other vehicle. (laughs) Nice. I kind of look at the show as a kind of a counterpart to Transformers Prime in all all truth and honesty, Um, even though, you know, they're they're, they're vastly different. But at the same time, they both serve the same purpose to introduce uh, the toy lines to a new generation. And both shows are smartly written, which is the big thing that... um, that, that I find amazing is that um, I watched all of Transformers Prime and I loved every step of it. I thought I think to me it's the, the best Transformers show that's out there, um, especially on how it's written, how dark it gets. And I had no idea that the same amount of energy and, and effort was being put into My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Um, watching some videos, I, I was seeing some videos with Lauren, Lauren Faust where she was talking about she, she was planting seeds in the first season um, <clears throat> to, to, I guess cultivate into a longer story where she was going to have all the characters develop and all sorts of things happen throughout the 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 additional seasons and um sadly i guess she um had a difference with the of opinion with the management and she was uh she she decided to excuse herself from the show during the production of the second season so a lot of the seeds she planted never came to fruition and a lot of story ideas she had never got to uh, to play out which is which is a pretty sad thing i i i, I although i don't watch the show anytime i hear about uh the genuine idea of what a creator of a show has for a uh, for an animated series and they don't get to do what they had set in stone what they wanted to do is is always an opportunity wasted um i can compare it to something like gargoyles where uh greg wiseman he wanted to do things but um when the show moved to saturday mornings he got denied that because disney wanted to go a different direction with the show and completely Ooh. fucked him over so <laughs> shit hasn't changed apparently but um now, the great thing though the great thing though about the the uh, progression of her storylines into the second and third season is that um, she did write this is an inside joke from the Gundam uh, uh, mess, or, uh, uh, podcast where the the Transformers Bible that has all of the pure and like oh, yeah. honest Transformers things in, in it or whatever like if you don't go by the G1, heart and soul you're not, the heart and soul, heart and soul yeah. baby yes um, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get that heart and soul in there. Uh, she became very close friends with the with the new head writers of the show, M.A. Larson and uh, Carolyn something else. I can't remember her last name. And so they still stay in communication in real life. And so even though she's not a part of the show, her influence on the storyline, how the characters act, everything was was is still kind of alive through the the current writers of um, of My Little Pony. So even though yes, yeah, she's not there, her spirit is still definitely keeping the show together. And that's why the show is as popular from season one as it has been to season three. In my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> did the things that she wanted, like, did all of them come to pass? Or did they did they have no, to do a compromise? Really. Well, they, they did make a compromise because, like, one thing is that, that there was a tra- there's a train that you see in the beginning of every episode during the opening animation, mostly at the beginning of every episode that gets them to where they're going. And so that was all Hasbro saying, we've got to put this train toy 
into the series and have it located in the central aspect for every person to see because when we make this toy we want the kids to be like oh my god it's the toy from the whatever and so that was part of the aspect that she knew it had to be in the show because it's still a toy commercial at the end of the day um even though it's a well written well well acted well drawn toy commercial um it still needs to create product for hasbro yeah. um so she didn't like the fact that they were pushing more and more of the product to be put into the series. So that was one of the aspects that made her leave. But the storyline elements, they're still in there. I don't know 100% exactly what each of those ones are, but her influence is still on the show. Man. Well, I'm glad to hear that she at least had some kind of input, at least uh, indirectly with that. And, um, and, you know, it's, 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 it's if anything, uh, just to see that she I, I, it was cool that she excused herself in a professional way. But she had to be outraged, man. I mean, have you guys ever saw any interviews with her where um, she goes into detail about that or any, anything of that nature? No, she's she's not uh, she's not outraged. She she just understood that um, they came to her to start the show up. She got the show started. She, every episode still has her as the executive producer, so she's still accredited as as the person who brought the who developed the show, who's the executive producer of the show. So her name is still in the credits every episode. Mm -hmm. um, when any time that uh, Hasbro does anything really big, they do try to get her involved with the the background of it, just for like to make sure that everything stays right. Because they're, at least they're smart enough to know that if it wasn't not for Lauren's uh, influence on the show, it wouldn't be where it is, and they wouldn't be making the money that they're making. Yeah. So, so that's so it's no, she's not as much of an outrage. It's just that she decided to move on to do different things. She started this wonderful project; it's still going, but she wanted to work on other things, like her own projects, not just basically, you know, Hasbro material. Nice. I mean, I can still see her influence uh, into the show, even up to its latest point. Uh, whenever I saw Question Girls, it really reminded me of her, her Galaxy Girls IP. So you can definitely tell she's still there. Not bad, not bad. Well, I should ask you guys, uh, I'll, I'll start with Devin. Um, how did you come across the show? Oh, God, complete happenstance. I mean, I never watched My Little Ponies when I was, when I was little. Uh, and whenever you know, I started college, you know, everybody starts getting to that nostalgia kick. And so, of course, this is a show that's based off of something that was around when I was a little kid. Maybe it was something that I watched, but we all knew of it. Mm -hmm. And I had friends just coming at me like waves saying, you need to watch this. And I was completely flabbergasted. I was like, well, are you kidding me? Like, ponies? It's retarded. <laughs> and then I sat down. And, I mean, I, I think I literally had someone, like, lock me in a room and, like, do you want to play a game? I mean, like, if you want out of here, you have to watch these two episodes. So I watched the first two episodes of the first season, which are, like, a solid arch. And I was amazed when I got it done. I was like, holy crap, this is... It shouldn't be called My my Little Pony. It should be called, like, Elemental Fighting Force with Horses. I don't know. It's just... It blew my mind. <laughs> that would be something else. <laughs> that would be amazing if, that was called, if the show was called that. It fooled me into watching it. <laughs> exactly. Like... It had everything I loved about the, the, the sort of stuff I watched when I was a little kid, but just Power Rangers. I mean, they've got multiple forces. They're all fighting for something. There's uh, there's music. I mean, it's, it's a good show. It's, you can tell it's very well made. Nicely done. Nicely done. Um, Eric, man, how did you come across the show for the first time? I came across it kind of the same way that the Ford, that Ford Chan did. Um, I, I was on the comics and cartoons board on Four Chan, looking at all the pretty pictures that they have on there, <laughs> and uh, I started noticing that over and over and over and over again they kept posting these pony threads, and I was just like, "Oh, it must be a new cartoon." Then I started noticing that these pony threads were getting shut down. Then I started noticing <laughs> that like the, the infamous uh, the mods are gone. Let's post ponies. Things was happening, oh, and no. the minute that that something on Four Chan gets my attention, specifically the the cartoon cartoon or the anime and manga or the uh pokemon board none of the other more perverted channels i don't go there but <laughs> anything that gets anything that gets their attention i have to go pay attention to mm -hmm. um so they started posting things about my little pony i went on youtube and there was the first and second episode fully 100 percent 1080p ready to watch streaming on there and i was like well let me check this thing out mm -hmm. watch the first two episodes and i was like okay, where's episode three? And I realized that episode three wasn't out yet, so I started looking up, like, when does the next episode come out? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, and they still do this. They'll do a season premiere for season one or season two or season three, and they'll wait, like, three weeks for the next the actual season to start. Mm -hmm. They'll just bring a season premiere out, and then for, like, two or three weeks, there's nothing. There's just more reruns. And then they do the actual regular episode runnings every weekend and all that stuff and so i then found out about the hub channel i found out about it being once discovery kids i then found out that we had it at work so i started oh. watching my little pony at work <laughs> <laughs> ponies at the shack man get out of yeah. here <laughs> 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 the, 
that's wild stuff, man. So, um, uh, uh, Doc, uh, how did you come mm -hmm. across the show, sir? Um, it's like everything nowadays, it's pretty much primarily, uh, primarily through podcasting. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually was listening to a, uh, Tukasatsu related podcast. It's a Power Rangers, Kamen Rider, whatever, however you call it. Um, and they had this whole episode dedicated to like the first two episodes of My Little Pony. And they were talking about like, oh my God, this, this thing you gotta, it like, it doesn't make sense. It's like. These are girls' shows, but it's actually really fun. I'm like, I'm already want, I'm already listening to a show about where they talk about a kid show. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'm really much game for anything. And um, I think this was like midway to the first season of the show. So there was like a hefty chunk of stuff online already on YouTube. So uh, <laughs> I kind of was like, all right, you know, let me try this out. And it was uh, it was interesting. I I I can say that like I've managed to watch like the complete first season of it and i've kind of uh i've wavered like a lot since then wow like, it, so i was like okay this is okay show and i think i i did an episode on my show about it and i was like yo this is fun this is not bad i can see why people are complaining but i'm usually pretty positive about stuff so i'm not usually that much of an asshole unless i need to be um and then I kind of just I haven't really been watching it because it's just like, ah, it's not really, you know, the thing that I need to watch. So it's just like I'm I'm I've, that's why I'm like I'm kind of like I'm a secret brony. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> like this is Covert, actually man. Yeah, uh, no, it's uh, I'm more uh, at least. OK, I'm uh, I am cool with the show. There's I, I'm no real hate towards it. I've leaned towards the OK, I kind of like it, but I'm not so anti against it or anything like that. It's. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's it's the the thing is like it's there's there is some entertainment factor, but then I still see it's like, man, this is still a kid show. <laughs> At its heart. Yeah. <laughs> well, as for me, um, I've never really sat down and watched the show. I may have seen clips here and there, but um, I know that um, the way I found out about Bronies because I knew the show was on because uh, I was pretty excited about the the hub coming on because they were showing reruns of Transformers on there, the original Generation One. And I would see the occasional commercial for uh, Friendship is Magic. And it's like, what is this? Is this a new My Little Pony? Well, th that's cool. It's on. Uh, girls can watch this uh, this new show. But um, about months, uh, several months later, uh, I was having a conversation with Chris and Paul, my co-host on Gundam. It was in between segments. And the subject of bronies came up. And Chris had to explain to me what a brony was. And I was mind fucked. <laughs> Clearly mind fucked. It's like, What? <laughs> I was like, well, what do you mean? It, like, the, it has a huge dude following. It's like, yeah, my my little pony has a huge following of of, of guys, and it's like, why? And um, you know, slowly but surely, just getting into conversations with people, I found out more about the show. I found out about uh, the the fact that the production is head up by um, was head up by uh, Lauren Faust, Faust, who was one of the character designers on Powerpuff Girls, and that was a cool show. I, I watched Powerpuff Girls back in the day. I'm not afraid to admit that, but um. Yeah, I, and Foster's Home and, for Imaginary Friends. And Foster's Friends. Home for Imaginary Friends, which is a great yeah. show as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if it has that if it has that prestige behind it, I can now understand why people watch the show and why they enjoy it. Although it is aimed towards kids, and it's like, I, I couldn't find myself getting into it. Um, but I can understand why, and I was a bit more understanding of that at that point in time. I, I, I still find it somewhat weird, but, you know, it, it's okay. Because, you know, I this shit I'm into that people would find weird. Like I was uh, mentioning on the stream yesterday that when... Um, uh, years ago, when Sailor Moon came out here in the States, I could not yes. stop watching that shit. <laughs> I, couldn't, yes. I couldn't stop watching it. Yes. And, and now I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the new animated series that's coming out soon. I'm going to sit down and watch that. So I guess in some ways I'm a casual Mooney. But um, <laughs> I, 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 had, Mooney. I had to go back in time to remember that I, at, when I was a child, and I was probably about five or six, and I don't think I've ever admitted this out loud, um, but I, I'll, I'll bear my soul today. And um, basically, when I was a kid, I liked strawberry shortcake. I don't know why. I liked it a lot. And I was like maybe four or five. And I guess I watched the cartoon or some shit like that. And it, my mom bought me the record. They used to, there used to be this record with songs on it and shit like that that I was uh, I enjoyed listening to. And I didn't collect the dolls or anything like that. But I, I, I for some reason liked strawberry shortcake, and I thought it was a uh, was cool and i'll never forget that because you know at one time in my life i guess i didn't see the divide in, in, as to what boys should enjoy and what girls should enjoy i just saw it as something that appealed to me and, and maybe that's why i like redheads to this day 
but <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that might be that might be the core of that. But um, I, I dug Strawberry Shortcake when I was a kid, and when I was growing up, I didn't collect the dolls, but um, I I used to watch Gem. Um, because it was sandwiched between Hell yeah, man. It was sandwiched yeah, between right shoes <laughs> shows. That shit was the show, man. I'll also go back and watch that nonsense on on the hub or whatever because the songs, some of them kick ass. But um, yeah, Jim, uh, it was truly outrageous, bro. And uh, and and <laughs> I, if they ever adapt that into a, a a more modern series, I might check it out just for a few episodes to see how it is. I'm I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, how, I, sure like but it's, it's just so fucking 80s though <laughs> it is it's mad <laughs> 80s which is its charm like if they ever adapted that into a live action movie they'd have to keep the era of 1980s man if they tried to modern it i would say that you, you you've you completely lost the concept they yeah. have to do like the full wachowski and just straight up um speed racer it or something mm-hmm. They're 100 percent behind the gimmick exactly exactly if you it, it, all in or get the fuck out <laughs> exactly how they should go about it but yeah gem man and um i know rainbow bright was cool too i i i didn't really collect anything but i didn't have anything against rainbow bright it was like that era where all this all this cool shit was coming out for girls and i was like five six and seven and then transformers hit and that shit was out the window (laughs) as soon as transformers and voltron into my life it's like oh strawberry short what (laughs) but as time went along as time went along, um, Sailor Moon came along, and I, I enjoyed watching the first two seasons of that, whatever was translated into English. Um, when it was on syndication, I would check out. By the time it moved to Cartoon Network and there were newer episodes, I didn't get to watch any of those. But um, for the most part, I, I, I never really had any problem with Sailor Moon, and I thought it was a cool concept. And it was the first magical girl show I ever saw, so... Um, I always had a... And I, always, I still have an affinity for it, and... Um, I still think it's a cool concept, and when 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 I think about ragging on bronies, I think about my own. I, I kind of reflect it back into myself because some of the things I'm into were not made for me, and they were not made for my demographic. So I, I can't really make fun of you guys, <laughs> or have any kind of prejudice against you guys, because I myself have some some demons that I have buried deep inside. So I. <laughs> Rainbow bright, that damn demon girl always haunting me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it, it's it's that's that's the way the way I look at it. But um, I I, I guess um, yeah, it, it, you guys have anything to 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 respond to that or um any oh, any, any kind of uh, guilty pleasures that um outside of uh not that my little pony's a guilty pleasure, but any guilty pleasures that you know if if someone tried to uh to to well anyway I'll I'll let you guys go ahead. I I just think a dude liking Sailor Moon at this point is just so fucking hack now. <laughs> it's like, powerful, it of course. So, it's like so it's so it's hit that point of nostalgia that like it doesn't matter. You everyone likes it now. Yeah, that's true. I, I guess you were really brave if you came out and said it back in the day when that shit was new. <laughs> now, oh, man. now strawberry shortcake. Nah. Oh fuck you. <laughs> Listen, I'm a brony, but even strawberry shortcake, that's too far. Mm-hmm. That's just that's, that's a road too far. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> no I, re- I remember getting super, like, retarded excited when I was young, uh, when it used to be on USA. They had that uh, USA action pack or whatever it was, like, first thing in the morning, they'd play Mighty Max and oh, yeah. uh, uh, Action Man, and they had... And they'd, Sailor Moon on there. For some reason, they only played Sailor Moon at like six thirty in the fucking morning, and I still, and even as a little kid, I didn't get up that early. Nice. But I would see oh, the previews for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I play uh, like so many mornings. I like, oh yeah, awesome this show. I think and I watched like, the same I, episode so many times. Yeah, I know they just re- <laughs> reran like the first like forty five episodes, and I never got to watch it. But I just knew from that little scene where you see uh, Sailor Moon just like pulling her wand up. I was like, I need to watch this show. I don't know what it is, but I need to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> But nice. Go ahead, Devin. What was you, you going to say a second ago? Oh, yeah. Uh, you mentioned when you were a little kid and you were watching Strawberry Shortcake, mm-hmm. you didn't quite understand, you know, the, that those kind of gender lines that the, the people who were making those shows were, were trying to, to introduce onto you. Mm-hmm. I think that's a core thing that describes Bronies is that they, they're kind of viewing this show from those same innocent eyes that you had when you were a child. They're kind of redefining uh, what makes you masculine? I mean, nowadays people think masculinity is I'm really athletic, I'm very sexual, I've got a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really, masculinity should be about the strength of your relationships with other people, 
and living for something, living oh. for a purpose that's bigger than yourself. You raise a good point. I think, I think that's that that's the core value in bronies and why the, the longer I kind of studied the, the fandom, why I got more into it. Uh, because as somebody who makes my, my predominant comic over at Pete Comics is a shonen. It's going to be an action adventure shonen, but it's got two gay guys. So I had to stop and reevaluate what I thought of, of what makes something effeminate, what makes something girly. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know what, my, my series, my comic, I think is going to be action packed and awesome. I think it should appeal to people who aren't just gay, but I think it should appeal to guys. I think there's going to be a lot of wicked stuff in it. Uh, and it shouldn't be held back just for that. So I had to look at ponies and go, you know what? It's awesome. And just because uh, there's an abundance of pink in the concept art doesn't mean that I should <laughs> make it over. Because I remember even you said this, uh, Soul Bro, on, on like one of the earlier Gundam episodes where just kind of like in just like a quick thing you guys brought up bronies for a quick second mm-hmm. um you had said that it's like it's destroying gender uh uh barriers yeah. and at that time i had no idea what the hell that was because i'd never paid attention to um i guess this would be like sociological stuff like uh, uh gender and, and <laughs> sexuality man, and whatever be- i'm just saying like i was <laughs> i'm i'm into cool cartoons i like adventure time i like pokemon i like you know and just stupid really well done cartoon on the internet a batman animated series all of these and so i'm always just looking for great new shows to watch that are entertaining because animation to me is like the the most unfounded like place for creativity ever like uh uh the the um guy who did uh 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 Secret of Nim and, and all of those, you know, oh, yeah, I Don can't Bluth. remember his name. Don Bluth. Don Bluth, thank mm-hmm. you. All of his movies, all those animated movies, the CGI, whatever, all that. So when I found My Little Pony, I wasn't thinking about like, oh, I'm breaking gender roles. I'm just like, this is a really <laughs> awesome fucking cartoon. You know, this is really fucking funny. And then I start hearing about people saying, well, brony is how you just defeat uh, gender roles. And I'm just like, it's just a creative fucking cartoon, guys. Calm down. But then I started talking to Devin about it, and it, that's more kind of his foray into things and how he thinks. And so mm-hmm. I was looking at it, and I was like, so by me watching My Little Pony and really fucking enjoying uh, Sailor Moon and enjoying Powerpuff Girls and the fact that I like female main characters and predominantly female casts, apparently I'm like revolutionizing the idea of what it is to be a dude. And mm-hmm, all it absolutely. was is, yeah. And so I was just like, cool, I can deal with that. I'll, I'll continue to watch my awesome cartoons. But at the same time, I enjoy Gundam because I, you know, I haunt the Gundam Facebook group like a fucking phantom. Um, <laughs> I like I like <laughs> I like my manly shows. I like wrestling. I like uh, uh, animes that have gigantic bosomed women. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm as much of a standard dude bro, I guess, as you can get. Minus you know, like having cars and going fishing and shit. But you know, but I also like My Little Pony. So, shoot, knowing- don't get me wrong. I like Gerard Butler and Jason Statham, and Daniel Craig. Mm-hmm. The only difference is I like to ship them when I'm done watching the action movie. <laughs> <laughs> After the credits, after the credits roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you must have been having a time during the recent uh, Fast and the Furious. Nice. And, oh, don't get me started. And the Expendables, man. Holy shit. Holy <laughs> <laughs> <Bullets>. man. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's starting to get that way, and I mean, everybody um, has their reasons for watching. I mean, the show's very broadly written to to appeal to uh, many different demographics. Uh, well, I mean, in his writing, cleverly so. I mean, you know, it's being marketed towards uh, young girls to buy the toys and whatnot but ironically dudes are buying the the merchandise is the merchandise too and i wanted to ask you guys do you guys pick up the merchandise like the the figurines and stuff like that hmm. never well, tried so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay i'll let Devin go first all right i have a t-shirt like we were talking about this the other day like what we have because as a geek, I think part of, of what I enjoy about being a geek is collecting things. Mm-hmm. And I have stuff. Like, I look around in my treasure trove of, like, action figures and stuff. And I realize that ponies weren't there. Like, all I have is a t-shirt. I don't know what it is. Like, I enjoy the show. But, I mean, it's still something that's being marketed at kids. Really, the only merchandise you can find is going to be a hot topic. And I am poor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I, I looked at a wood shirt. Uh, a shirt from Woot. Um... It's actually pretty nice. It's like a uh, four ponies of the apocalypse. I thought I was like, oh yeah, that's actually kind of funny. Yeah, that's, that's actually, like the, that is really, that's actually a, pretty funny. <laughs> that's a, that's as far as it probably would go. I think maybe a figure at one point, maybe one at one, uh, at one sometime in the future. But even I need shelf space. 
<laughs> they running out, huh? <laughs> yeah. Eric, uh, what 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 merchandise do you have? Like any figures, toys, any any of that stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've well, seen I, it. I, I, want, I, want, I wanted to, <laughs> yeah, I'll put pictures up. Um, they, they introduced uh, something that is is normally called Gachapon from yeah, over here. Japan. Oh, and yeah. and so they introduced basically their own version of Gachapon over here in America with My Little Pony, and then I think Lego picked up on it, and you see it at Walmart all the time. They mm -hmm. basically introduced a box just to just open the box up, set it on the shelf, watch bronies destroy themselves trying to get a hold of them. <laughs> oh, um, shit. They're just little plastic $1.99 bags that have one of like 26 random ponies in the bag. You mm -hmm. have a little cheat, cheat hole that you can actually pull the little, little toy up to and check and see if you can see what it is. But it has sometimes they have like special, but they're like little tiny like lego man sized pony toys and they oh, don't wow. move they don't they don't have hair they're just little to me little collectible shit that i can put on my my shelf right. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so i got into a big kick with my female friends where every uh i have i had two really close uh girl friends i don't know what the fuck to call them they're friends. my friend thank yes yes a big bosom <laughs> friends nice uh who nice. would love to thank you who would love to go <laughs> to walmart on payday and we would each like dizzy up about three or four bags and we'd go outside of walmart we open up our ponies and see if we could collect them all mm -hmm. and so i have a nice little collection of those i have a uh, a, a, a derpy is best pony t-shirt um i have a my little pony lanyard that i wear at work sometimes and then i have a brony uh trucker hat that i wear sometimes wow <laughs> but, but that's really that's really about it i mean uh the only reason oh, why i got the I have a wallet i forgot about that yeah oh, yeah oh. He, have, he has his brony wallet but uh, when it comes <laughs> when it comes to the actual like kids toys like the little dolls that you can comb their hair and change their clothes and stuff <laughs> to, to me that's not a toy that i like and i think that that is really meant for, for the little kids right. like create the little collectible shit for the older people like me that likes collecting little shit mm -hmm. but then let the little kids buy the actual dolls now there are normal rational non-creepy bronies that do buy the bigger uh, dolls and the, the the plushies and all that stuff, and I'm that that's fine, that's cool. Uh, what was it? College humor created that one video where I the remember. one dude, uh, his fingers are covered and caked in like <laughs> Doritos <laughs> chips or something, and he's like, yeah. So so those guys are out there, but to me, just it, it, if you want to collect those toys, they're there. You're buying, you're paying. What, what's what's the phrase? You're paying what you, for what you like with your wallet. So they're giving money to Hasbro for a product that they like. That's fine. I just think that's that's the step too far for me when it comes to collecting things is the actual like comb their hair toys. But that's just me. Well, all right, man. I mean, I mean, you're you're you're, you're, you're at least collecting them, and <laughs> at least yeah. some of the figurines and stuff I like that. Determine uh, what gets space on my shelf is I look at the two like shows. I think if I put them in a battle, who would kick whose ass? Mm -hmm. Whoever wins, they get my shelf space. Nice, nice. Yes. There you go. That, and, that. So, and, and so far, Gundam Double O is winning. I think that shelf space right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got Gundam Double O, a big ass dude, like Druid from World of Warcraft, and I've got one of those big ass songbirds that costs like three hundred bucks. That I know. Wow. What? What an eclectic mix. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um I, I would say that uh i i have to ask uh who who are you guys as well um i i'm i'm not sure if doc will be able to answer this but um who are you, uh <laughs> who are your favorite characters on uh, my little pony I'll, I'll start with you eric my favorite character is the infamous background pony uh derpy hooves um i don't know if i don't know if you know the story behind her but uh long story short in the pilot episodes and in one of the other episodes mm -hmm. there was this little gray pegasus pony that had derped up eyes and the fan base saw her in the background and nicknamed her derpy hooves oh wow and um <laughs> she ended up gaining this gigantic fan base where she has her own canon she has her own like storylines with dr hooves when they're going off and doing like time and space adventures nice uh, so much so that in season two, they decided to actually give her uh, a, a spot in the show instead of just being a background pony. Um, she actually spoke. Oh. And I don't know if anyone has ever seen the internet explode before. Like, <laughs> ser like volcanic eruptions went, holy shit, what's going on over there? But for like just three or four minutes, Derpy Hoop spoke at the beginning of one of the episodes and at the brony dom went nuts wow but unfort but unfortunately right at the end of the of the episode release uh hasbro releases the episodes on the itunes about two hours later mm -hmm. um unfortunately by the end of the episode t 
10 people sent an email to the to the writer of that episode at Hasbro complaining that they thought that Derpy Who, because of her kind of a goofy voice and her derped up eyes and her being klutzy and everything, they thought that she represented a special needs uh, kid. Oh. And so because of en- enough d- – that many p- and because the writer of that episode does have a special needs kid herself. So it affected her and it affected the Hasbro people there enough to where when it actually went to iTunes two hours later, Derpy had a different voice and her eyes weren't as derped. And so by canon – they, her name is no longer Derpy's because of that just small little just misunderstanding when it came to the families watching that episode. Dang. So, but now, but but even though, but still, the, the Hasbro understands that Derpy is this amazing little character because even in this uh, Equestria Girls movie, which we can talk about or not talk about, I'll be fine with that. No, we'll, 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 we'll definitely we'll definitely get to that. I do I do want to cover that as well. But go ahead. Okay. <laughs> even at the end, even at the end of that movie in the credits, there's a Derpy. So mm-hmm. they understand that Derpy may not ever actually talk in this series ever again, but they know that the kid, the, the fandom is looking for. Her, so they'll stick her in the background even to this day. So I have a t-shirt of her she's my favorite character but if i had to pick a main six it would be fluttershy the the oh. kind-hearted gentle uh animal friendly uh pony because she reminds me of a lot of my friends here in real life but well 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 yeah, said sir okay. well said <laughs> Devin, uh, what, what what's your favorite character my favorite character has to be Princess Luna. That's because no matter what I'm watching, I fucking love villains. Oh, and wow. right at the beginning of that first two series arc, you find out that the the main princess of Sir Princess Celestia got like gotten some sort of epic fight with her sister like hundreds of years ago, and one of them was trying to take over the world, so she had to banish her sister to like the moon. She's just a badass. So like, well, well. And so at the beginning, at the beginning of the first two episodes, you find out there's this monster called Nightmare Moon. Nightmare Moon gets defeated. You find out that she's actually Princess Luna, the main princess's little sister. And so they have they've had her pop up like three or four times throughout the seasons, just in like little like fan spots. Um, and so yeah, so she's a really cool character though. I like her. Not bad, Doc. Man, I know you got a favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I kind of like Rainbow Dash. Oh man! I, I, I'm, uh, I'm usually cool with the like kind of the tomboy kind of characters. I don't know why. It's just, mm-hmm. they, she's she's kind of fun. It's just a very uh, like most of the lessons need to be learned from her at times because she's not always understanding of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So I, I can see where like okay, there's the the their way of uh, trying to um, force a lesson, and even if it kind of counteracts with another lesson that's being happening at the exact same time, it's weird. I don't know, but it, at the least uh, from that character of the time I get to watch the show, I was like, okay, this uh, this one's fun. Well, well, well. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, this is the first time I'm hearing a lot of these names. So, um, the only one I, I knew pre-conversation, I suppose, is Twilight Sparkle, and that's only because, um, uh, God, Tara Strong does her voice, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh I, God, I, yes. I heard, oh God, yes, she does. Now she's fine as hell. And <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me let me put yeah, that out right. there. You're let me, right. Let me let me, let me mm. put that out there. But um, I I was listening to an interview with um with her on Fat Man on Batman, Kevin Smith's yes. podcast. I knew you were gonna bring that up. And yes, that okay. was a very awesome conversation. And she brought up the whole scene, man, and the fact that you know she was overwhelmed when the, when the fandom hit. You know, she um, found out about it. And, and it's funny because Doc, you were at um you were at AFO, right? And you were there when she was there, right? I think so. Yes. I, th- I, 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 I yeah, I think I was there at that one. Yeah, it was. It was. That, I believe it was that one because um, that was the one I bought tickets to. Then I couldn't go because I couldn't get off of work, so I sold my ticket to a friend of mine, and I met up with you guys in the hallway. And before I left, uh, I think we were talking about the fact that she was there or something like that. But um, I heard it was it pretty much when sh- her panels. Sh- happen like bronies just swarmed in <laughs> that was to be expected and it was, it became brony con which leads me to a question um have any of you guys been to a brony centric convention or um event or anything like that um well we we live in uh, uh we live in west virginia and um there's a little conve- an anime convention. It's it's kind of turning into a everything convention now. But there's a little convention that happens once a year here that we've gone to, and bronies are starting to appear there. Same thing with the uh, Homestuck people and Doctor oh. Who and yeah, Shudder in the in the dark. The the, the Homestucks are here. Mm-hmm. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, uh, that's about the closest thing we've ever got to go to a convention that has uh, bronies there all the time because um, that's it. But no, we've I've not had a chance to go to BronyCon or or any other of the thousands of other brony conventions that are nearby. <laughs> I mean, I've gone to Anime USA, and depending which panel you go into, sometimes it's like a mini bro but mm-hmm. I've never gone to like an exclusive one. Well, man, um, I know. Uh, if uh, hopefully you guys will have to, uh, we'll get to go to something that um, that will be a large concentration of uh, of bronies. To, but <laughs> have you? Have, do you guys in your clique? Do you have a lot of male friends that are, that are into the show? Hmm. Uh, well, good handle. yeah. Yeah, about a handful. I've I've got uh, me and Devin. Um, mm. As you can see, you originally asked me to bring two. I can only find one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got. Uh, I do have a lot of friends that enjoy the show, mostly female. Um, but none of them are really bronies. Like the only actual like bronies out of my group would probably be uh, my best friend and then Devin. But my best friend is actually working right now, so mm-hmm. <laughs> he couldn't be here today. But <laughs> just, just yeah, I do have a lot of friends that do like the show. There's a lot of guys that I know online, but just here amongst my actual real life, like I can walk to their house. Friends, it's mostly just like Devin. Mm-hmm. Well, man, what you want on a secret? I used to work uh, for Amazon.com, and oh. there are a lot of bronies hidden there. Oh. A lot. Oh, no. In, uh, in the yeah. weeds, in the reeds, hidden. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like Charlie in the trees. <laughs> they have a really relaxed like dress code, so I would literally see people walk by with like Rainbow Dash hoodies on all the time. Makes me rethink buying that Kindle now. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> fun, fun fact. Did you know that there was a David Bowie lyric that became the entire plot line of an episode of My Little Pony? The plot, the, uh, the lyric was, the diamond dogs are poachers and they hide behind trees. There was an entire episode dedicated to that one line from a David Bowie song. That's oh, crazy. Yeah. Wow. I, I did not know that. <laughs> As I'll I, try. To, I'll try to throw in little random tidbits throughout the episode. <laughs> did you know? How many MLP? <laughs> <laughs> well, what is um uh, uh, Doc and um mm-hmm. uh, being that uh, I brought up uh, AFO earlier. I mean, how was your experience seeing all the all the bronies coalesce and, and congregate, man? Uh, how um, how was your experience with that? It's it's um. Well, the I, thing is, I, I apologize in advance if any of them were creepy. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> here's here's the thing with me, um, and it comes along with a lot of stuff that I do watch. Like I mentioned, I I learned about this through a Power Ranger podcast of sorts, mm-hmm. and um, it being a primarily a kids show, kids kind of franchise. And I also, and this is like not a big shock if anyone actually follows me on, on Twitter or anything. I'm also a fan of uh, Pretty Cure. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is like the best way I was able to describe under and understand the Brony community. It was like, okay, this pretty cure, which is Japanese Toei franchise show, it's like the other juggernauts that um, they have besides Sentai and Kamen Rider, uh, primarily targeted towards girls. But it's usually it's just, it's a magical girl show uh, where a bunch of girls uh, kill you with explosions of love and friendship. Oh, and, oh. And that's it, a very close way to explain it. <laughs> and it's. It is. It has some of the best choreographed fights I've seen in a while in in early Saturday morning cartoons or Sunday morning, I should say. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's strange. I was like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, uh, and so that's kind of why I was able to be a little bit more sympathetic towards the Brody community of sorts. I was like, okay, I'm ready. I am too far di- in too deep with Pretty Cure. So like, at like watching the show, I was like, okay. I've hit the point where I can imagine what voice act, what Japanese say would be voicing the, which pony, and how they would <laughs> sound, and all kinds of this shit. Because I'm like a fucking idiot. But um, <laughs> being around the people, I've, and this is the thing that I usually do with cons is I usually in my own little circle, pretty mm-hmm. much all the time. So I don't ever necessarily see what the I guess quote bad side of the of the community of anything really. Right. Like I mean you I mean you uh, you shudder at the Homestuck people, but even I know some friends who are into Homestuck, and they're generally cool people. Uh, and I think I've just lucked out when it comes to um, experiencing fandoms. I mean, I'll I'll see them around and be like, okay, there's another dude with the Rainbow Dash haircut and with a. Uh, slightly cut off T-shirt, but you know that's kind of like yeah, okay. Let's I, I've I've come to accept it, so it's like I, I have no real issues with it. Like it's it's whatever at this point with me. <laughs> the key to keeping your fandom from being creepy is just a single thing: deodorant, man. Deodorant. 
deodorant. Yeah, and, and, that's that, right. that goes for any <laughs> fandom. Holy shit. That's right. Being in the fighting game community, that is essential. <laughs> <laughs> Yet no one follows the rules. No one. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But um, what I guess uh, I'll, I'll toss this around the room. Uh, what is the best moment you've had as a brony? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Devin this first. Oh Lord, as a brony, <laughs> there was <laughs> there was a little while ago. By little while ago means I, I really have no idea uh, that we actually like our little circle of friends had a Facebook group called Cutesanera, which is there's a little group of ponies that are desperately trying to get their cutie marks and they haven't earned them yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are referencing, I think there's a Spanish ceremony for girls hey, uh, that are coming of age. Yeah, Cutesanera, yeah. where they're coming of age. Mm -hmm. uh, we made a group called that and we were all for like a solid year desperately wanting to go get cutie mark tattoos. And thankfully, I think some time has given us all a bit of moment to reflect and realize that was probably the worst idea we've ever had, but <laughs> it was still fun. It, it was just nice for about six months to just all kind of just like pony out there for a little bit with oh, everybody. Yeah. Nice. Well, well done. Um, Eric, uh, I guess I, uh, what, what's the best moment you've had as a brony? Okay. This is actually going to seem like a really terrible moment, oh. but at the end it becomes the best moment. So mm -hmm. th this is, uh, you, you brought up your, your kind of like your, your life story there with Rainbow Bright and everything. I did. Uh, this this is a very <laughs> like emotionally uh, thing, a very emotional event that happened to me, and this was uh, about about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the way it would work out is Saturday mornings, me and my best friend uh, Stephanie would work at my store. I'm afraid to say its name because blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yes. Saturday mornings, we would work there. And like I said, we have TVs in the back in on advertisement and we could actually change it to the hub and watch My Little Pony. Right on. So it was supposed to be a short shift. We was only supposed to work about four or five hours and then we would actually hang out that evening mm -hmm. and go do whatever. So Saturday morning rolls around. The episode's about to start and we actually get busy. So we have, it's actually a DVR. So we hit pause. We take care of the customers and this old brown headed just goofy fucking old dude comes in <laughs> and and at this point um i stephanie is busy so i take him and we i'm asking him questions about what he's needing he's needing this adapter thing and i'm um, trying to help him out and and come to find out that he'd actually had come into the store the, the day before and spoken to stephanie and with the exact same little adapter thing and just we couldn't help him she mm -hmm. couldn't help him and all this. He lived about 35 minutes away. So he was complaining to me about having to drive up here again for this adapter. And Damn. so I tried to help him. I tried to help him as best I could. Um, he then like pulls me off to the side, like to where no one could hear me. And at this point, the other two uh, associates are there. Brian's one of them and his other girl. And he starts calling them names. He's like, I came over here yesterday. No one helped me. That fairy, that flake, and that broad up there in the front up there didn't help me with nothing. Oh. And I'm just, and I'm just like, listen. And at, the, and at this point, I'm kind of the assistant manager at this point so i'm just like listen I'm, i apologize if we couldn't help you but i don't appreciate when you call my associates names yeah and i'm starting to sh i'm starting to shake because i don't like you know abrasive things like this so i just walk up to the front so he comes stomping up and he's like he's pissed off all to hell screaming pissing off everybody in the store everyone's staring at him there's like four or five customers in the store with us it's a busy morning i'm already pissed off because i didn't get to watch my little fucking pony i got this old <laughs> son of a bitch coming in here causing me fucking aggravation stephanie tries to jump in and like take care of him and she, he starts screaming at her we end up just refunding his money back to him and getting him the hell out of the store mm -hmm. and then like 45 minutes later we get to go home so stephanie's stephanie's shaking she's upset i'm upset and um we are all of our plans just basically got fucking ruined because we don't have any want to do anything we just want to go home so i was like go to your house i'll go home let's just relax a little bit and if we think about something later we'll try it out mm -hmm. so she went home i went home so i missed my little pony i'm at home and i'm still pissed off and so i'm just like fuck it i'll see if it's on youtube so I bring up the episode, and the beginning of the episode has Pinkie Pie, this oh. happy little party uh, p uh, pony mm. who likes bouncing around everywhere she goes, and she likes parties and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, and the beginning of the of the fucking episode, she's explaining how she likes to see everybody smile in the town, 
and she starts up this little song called Smile, 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 and it is the happiest son of a bitch little song you've probably ever heard. If you have a shitty day, it it should cheer you up unless you have no soul. Oh. So while listening, <laughs> while listening, <laughs> while listening to this happy, just joyful little song about this pony wanting to make every one of her friends smile, I start crying, and I mean like wow. man crying, like weeping, and it was a combination of frustration, anger, uh, just sadness, just everything just kind of exploded out of me during this episode of this with a song, and it was because I was cheering up, I was getting happy because this pony was fucking singing this song, and I recommend everyone that's listening, go to YouTube and type in Smile, Smile, Smile Remix, and you'll see like two or three of them, and listen to those songs, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I've played this song for a couple of my non-even, like, cartoon liking friends, and they're like, that's the happiest fucking song ever! <laughs> so, <laughs> so I ended up listening to that song three or four times, even to this day, if if that's, if I'm having a shitty day, I will listen to that song, I'll get teary-eyed, I'm even getting teary-eyed right now, um, I'll cheer up, I'll get immediately all of my problems leave me, and everything's just better for it, so, if I had to say that's probably, like, the best anything, like, Pinkie Pie fixed me that day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, that, that, that's actually, uh, I, I didn't expect, I didn't expect that to, um, that, that sounds pretty awesome actually man I, I didn't expect it to be as uh as deep as it went man that's 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 pretty cool that um that at, at a moment that you needed it uh the, the show uh, the show was able to uh to pull you out of a, a pretty stressful day i know I've, I've i've had experiences like that with uh other things you know i'll, I'll have a bad day at work and then i'll, I'll play a game or I'll watch something and it'll 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 cheer me up or it'll pull me out of uh out of out of a, a downward spiral type t- emotional state you know it's just it's it, 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 the world could be fucked up, and it's it's cool that you yeah. find resolve in mm-hmm. something like this. And um, Doc, I, I know you're not a brony, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I mean, I, hey, I, I laughed that one time that one episode happened. That's kind of it. I can't follow go. that shit. There you go. That's what's up. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break, guys. Um, when we come back... Oh, by the way, I wanted to answer... Uh, ben had written in the chat, uh, wait a second, female bronies? Aren't they called Pig Sisters or something? Actually, uh, I know with the uh, the video I'm about to show you guys next, that actually answers that question. When we go to, oh, As we go into the break, you'll see uh, a video play that, um, that talks more about bronies and... Um, Pretty much the different kinds of bronies, and that'll be one of my questions when I when I come back. But our next question, oh, and 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 you guys can think about this. But our the next question will be, what was your worst moment you encountered as a brony? So I want y'all to think hard on that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back in a few minutes, guys. Hang tight. For one to fully comprehend this pony fascination, let me first sum up the previous of Pony Generations. Generation 1 appeared on TV in the 80s. It was made to sell toys. Plots were hardly very weighty. And Generation 2, I do not mean to grouse and gripe, but these characters fell right into the girly stereotypes. And Generation 3 is just too awful and too tragic. So let's jump to number 4, where friendship is magic. All the characters compelling and the stellar storytelling and the lovely animation brought about great dedication. This is where we meet the bronies, for they like my little pony. Yes, the bros enjoy the ponies, so let's go and meet the bronies. Though the bros and pony fandom might simply seem absurd, true fans adore the show while others gallop to the herd. For hipster bronies watching Paso Ponies has appeal, though first it seems ironic, soon enough it's very real! For moderates, the start was humble, finding it through hype, when the bronies did invade their favorite forums and websites. And though first a little skeptical, these moderates inquired, and once they finally saw the show their love for it caught fire! The core of the meetups and conventions that you see are the social groups that come to BronyCon and ever free! Yes, the moderates and hipsters are the big groups of the bronies, they're the dudes that are the bulk of all the men who like the ponies! Thank you. 
Creative bronies are the final bunch you need to know, making music, art, and stories all inspired by the show. While counting down the days from season one to season two, the musicians wrote funky little songs like Pinky's Brew. The pony generators churn out many new OCs, and the artists put their art on Tumblr blogs for all to see. The writers pair their favorites, voicing charming little quips. And although they face some critics, they will go down with their ships. Their talent is their glory, ever growing, never stopping, from the music to the stories and the artwork and the clapping. Oh dear. But let's steer away from that one and get right back to the ponies, for creatives are the final bunch in the wacky world of bronies. Creatives and moderates and lastly, hipster bronies are the groups that are quite proud to watch the show. My Little Pony! Hey! Forgetting some pony? It seems your little lessons left the fairer sex neglected. Well, when girls like little ponies, that's very much expected. Even so, you can't ignore these Phillies' contributions. We're involved in brony culture, and we demand our inclusion. We attend all the conventions, create art and music too, discuss the show, talk on forums, everything that these dudes do. No, we're not bros, but we're bronies. Though some prefer Pegasisters. And we also are creatives. Moderates, and even hipsters. Well, there you have it. All the bronies. Any pony else I missed? Now, if it's all the same to you, class dismissed. I can't wait to get played with by some beautiful little girl. She'll brush our hair and we'll have tea parties and maybe my we'll even... My little pony, my little pony. Ah. Oh no! Brony! We didn't get a little girl at all. We got an emotionally stunted grown man. What does he want with us? We are meant for eight-year-old girls. Yeah, I just picked up Pinkie Pie and Twilight Sparkle to add to the collection. The collection? Run! And I know just where I'm gonna put them. Put me anywhere, just not next to the flashlight! Mmm, bro hoof! I'm out! Oh no. Ew! He's getting Cheeto dust in my mane. He smells like Ball's energy drink! Wow! Oh, you are going to be my best friend. We're gonna run Quest and Skype with my internet girlfriend in Korea and listen to Skrillex and... Okay, I was really hoping he was being ironic, but I think he's actually being sincere. And don't think I've forgotten about you, Pinkie Pie. Can pony toys get violated? In episode seven, you won 35 consecutive games of tic-tac-toe against a rarity. My face is worn down from him kissing me. And that's why you're my favorite pony. I wish I could appreciate that he's not afraid to challenge gender stereotypes, but I'm too distracted by the erotic fanfiction on his computer. Oh my god, it's on! It's on! It's on! Oh, oh, my little pony! Okay, my little this pony. is our chance. Let's make a run for it. We'll come back for you! Now it's time to play with my favorite toy. The most magical friendship of all. Welcome back to Barbecue Night. 
All right, Ooh. man. We're back and we're rapping about My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. No, we're not. We're talking about bronies, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> Close, but you're way off. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And, of course, I've, I'm joined here by Eric, Devin, and Doc. Man, welcome back, fellas. And yeah. um, as I left you guys on the cliffhanger, uh, my next question was actually uh, the polar opposite of what I asked before we took a break. Um, and that is, uh, what would be the worst moment you've encountered as a brony? Uh, this is all you guys. I don't know what the hell. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I tossed the question to Eric. Go ahead, sir. Well, um, I, uh, okay. I don't actually have a personal negative experience like that happened to me. Like I didn't get you know pulled into an alleyway and, and beat up by a bunch of you know brony haters or anything. Mm -hmm. um, probably the worst experience I've been is just seeing so many people. On, I guess online in general uh, and even some of my friends on Facebook and other places like that just basically always going to the fact that I like My Little Pony as kind of a point of, you know, well, you're doing something wrong. You watch My Little Pony, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's just that standard stereotype of it's a girl show, blah, blah, blah. We've all heard it. Mm -hmm. um, e even today uh, on the Gundam Facebook thing, I had posted a picture of uh, Raven from Teen Titans Go, oh, voiced, yeah. by Terror, voiced by Terror Strong, who mm -hmm. does Twilight Sparkle. In the first episode of, of Teen Titans Go, they have Raven playing with their own version of My Little Pony. Oh, no. Uh, and they, they called him, like, the, the Pegasus Sisters or something like that. <laughs> 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 Amazing Princess just Thumper Bun or something like that. But um, I posted that picture, and I was like, look, even Raven's a brony. And, of course, everyone was like, blah, bronies, blah, whatever. But it was, it's just like, even to this day, there's still people that are like, grown men should not be watching My Little Pony. Blah. And it, it's, I guess that's, that's that's probably just it. It's just the fact that because you say you're a brony, everyone has the exact same reaction. Yeah. And that's probably the worst thing that's happened to me. I know that's not the worst ever in comparison, but I guess I'll leave that up to, uh, to Devin to tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> By all means, Devin, go for it. So, being gay gives you a certain amount of creative license whenever people want to hate on you. Because mm -hmm. if they want to tell you that you're gay because you're a fandom, I'm like, what of it? <laughs> What's your point? You know. And gotcha. I, I've, I've gotten really lucky in the fact that for a lot of my friends and family, it really, really doesn't matter. Like, you know, like everybody just kind of accepts me. It's very anticlimactic. I'm like, oh, I'm gay. And they're like, we don't care. But, uh... Shut up, get, shut up and get shut up and get shut up and get on World of Warcraft. That's a raid tonight, damn it. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. But for one day, like I, I'm really, really fortunate to have a boyfriend whose parents do not give a crap at all whatsoever. They're, they're totally fine with me and him being together. Mm -hmm. But one day, his mom's helping us do our laundry, and he finds my or she finds my Bernie wallet. Oh, and no. I have never heard the end of it since. Oh no, <laughs> never heard the end of it. Oh my god, let me tell you what. I'm like, what? What? What is this? Like a hypocrite? Like you don't care that I do these things to your child, but I can't watch ponies. <laughs> that's where she. That's where she draws the line in the sand. People have people have certain raw nerves, apparently. Apparently, <laughs> ponies is one. I I'm glad to see that that's a raw nerve and not anything. Not anything that would be a uh, lifestyle detrimental or anything like that. <laughs> if anything, <laughs> you can't win them all, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> But man, I I, um, I I found an interesting interview um, with John Delancey, who uh, a lot of us know from Trek fandom as Q on Star Trek: The Next Generation. But um, apparently, he also played a, a villain on My Little Pony as well. Uh, what was the name of that villain? Discord. Discord. That's it. That's it. He played the voice of Discord, and um, I'll always know him as the the air traffic controller that um, that showered Albuquerque in airplane parts. <laughs> <laughs> shout out shout out to breaking bad but uh <laughs> but um he helped he had a hand in helping to produce the uh the documentary bronies which uh i showed a trailer for during during our uh the first segment and um he's on there being interviewed and he said he noticed that many adult fans of my little pony have baggage that they're dealing with and that my little pony can help them deal with that baggage um and it that's, that's exactly how he phrased it um do you find it that true with yourselves or other fans you know oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah just just judging from eric's story yeah uh, <laughs> that, that that that's clear but uh any other any other thoughts on that at all yeah uh yeah go ahead Devin. not for me not really i mean it's a show i sit down i get popcorn i'm excited theme song comes on mm -hmm. 
but I don't really think it's, it's touched my soul. Uh, oh. It's a show. <laughs> I mean, I, w- I, w- I would guess that like everyone has their own thing that they they grow attached to, and that's the thing that makes them keep going in life. Yeah. Um, I don't see why necessarily the the pony aspect is have, has to be a factor in that. Yeah, honestly, I don't think either because I know everybody has baggage, and everybody brings it to whatever fandom they're into. And sometimes, you know, watch being a fan of something makes it, it it's quite therapeutic when in dealing with issues that you may have because you might see something that you're going through represented in the story of something that you're watching and then it helps you through it sometimes. So it can it can be very therapeutic in that manner. And I don't I I, I don't see that it just pertains to being a brony. But um, Eric, any thoughts at all? It's it's the fact that the the fandom itself. It's not just the fact that these people are part of a fandom because you've got you know Trekkies and people in the Star Wars and and they're some of the most hateful you know argumentative buttholes on the internet. <laughs> it's the it's the and you guys know this to be true. I'm a part of those fandoms also, and Indeed. I'm just like y'all just need to start stop arguing about goddamn episodes one through three. We get it, they sucked. It's okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, it's because it's it's basically because this fandom specifically highlights friendship, tolerance, and love for one another despite whatever you may bring to the table. You could have a mental condition, a physical condition, uh, an emotional condition, whatever it may be, and the community as a whole, not, of course, every bit of it's got its problems, but the community as a whole is very open and endearing and loving towards their other fellow bronies. If you can meet a group of of actual like you know tr- I hate saying this phrase like tr- no true Scotsman <laughs> mm-hmm. but a, tr- a true group of bronies they're just like dude Fluttershy is the greatest thing ever and they don't care what you got going for you they they generally are that's the reason why the four chan fiasco even happened in the first place was because on 4chan on comic and cartoons where you've got a bunch of comic book geeks arguing about which was the best version of Black Cat to jack off to you've got a bunch of people you got a b- <laughs> thank Kevin Smith for that one <laughs> yeah thank Kevin Smith for that one you've got a bunch of people then coming in and, and starting to talk about love and tolerance mm-hmm. and, and tolerate and tolerating the fuck out of people and um, the Gundam fandom as a whole has oh. kind of like broken apart you, you know you guys have seen this oh yeah absolutely um, and so it's just the fact that this specific fandom, as of you know lately, uh, is highlighting tolerance and understanding and friendship and just these 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 uh, happy, gushy little feelings that not most fandoms usually do. That's what I was telling Devin about this last night. The one thing that unifies the fandom faster than anything is when a new episode comes on. Mm-hmm. You'll have people piling into live stream uh, sessions. You'll have people uh, torrenting episodes and getting in YouTube and getting on the message boards and 4chan, and they're all just like, oh my god, pictures, and laughing about this and laughing about that. And not very often, there's been probably a handful of things in the actual series, but not very often does this fan base ever actually argue with one another. You know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and so I'd have to say that that what you just mentioned, Eric, if I did have something that touched me, uh, not the show, but the fandom, uh, that is really amazing that I've noticed. Like, It's kind of a counterculture to what we're used to on image boards online, which is you've got that veil of anonymity, let's be an asshole. And Ponies is one of the first big fandoms that showed up and said, you know what? It's not my thing. I don't think I'll be an asshole. And it's inflamed everyone else, of course, but I love that this outstanding group of people have shown up and said, you know what? No, we can be online and bail ourselves. Not bad. That's a pretty. That's that's uh, the complete opposite of how the internet usually operates. <laughs> that's crazy. But um, it, it I do notice a sense of positivity, um, a, a vibe, a positive vibe with the with the Brony fandom, and that to me is the best takeaway from that. Um, honestly, because I meet I meet too many fans that are jaded and bitter, and that's usually the people I come across on the internet, and how, how people come up, you know, just really sarcastic and and. Not all too welcoming to new developments or change. And as you mentioned, in the Gundam fandom, that's more often than not. <laughs> it's, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. many, <laughs> many of us bitter, myself included. So, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I like parts of age. Hey, they, they, uh, I, I, you know what? I do, too. I'll put that on the table. There are parts of age. I can take away parts of age. And it's, I, more so than I can from C, from C Destiny. So, um <laughs> when, when people tell me which one's worse, it's like Destiny all day long. That how show. is it? How is it that I watched Destiny with the recaps still actually helping me? Because I was watching it in so many chunks that I keep forgetting what I watched last, and it was a recap episode <laughs> the next day. I was like, "Oh, okay, I'm good." <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> yeah, that's 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 my same experience as well. But um, I, I gotta ask Eric and Devin, uh, what kind of hurdles do you guys face when convincing other men or other people um, that are not into My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, that it's a show that anyone can watch? Our show worth watching. I don't. I don't. I just tell them watch the first two episodes, and they usually get hicked or kicked or hooked, 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 English motherfucker. <laughs> 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 this 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 stroke was brought to you by Mountain Dew. Nice. <laughs> Generally, I just tell them to give the first two episodes a try, and they do, and they're like, "Hey, this ain't too bad." And they watch the second episode, the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and then then da -da -da -da, that's it. And they they like the show. That's I'm, really it. I, I I personally am not the kind of person that I, I took care of my shit before I even became a brony. I mm -hmm. made sure to not have asshole friends. I got rid of them a long time ago. Nice to so done. a lot a lot of my friends generally <laughs> you I threw that shit before I walked in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I picked up I picked up some stragglers along the way, but I've been taking care of them. But uh, generally my friends are all kind of even killed with me, and so I if if I generally like it they'll generally like it. Not everything, of course. There's some specific, like, obscure anime that I like that they're just like, that's even too weird for me, Eric. Thank you. Oh. Um, but generally, I just say, go on YouTube, let's watch the first two episodes, and they're just like, what's next? And I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, Devin, um, any any uh, any thoughts on that at all? Um, you, have you run into any kind of hurdles trying to convince people that it's a good show or the same experience for you, you as well? The hurdles for me usually come after I get them to watch. Like, yeah, they may be apprehensive, but they're, they're willing to just do something and get it over with. Mm -hmm. And then once I actually get them to watch that first two episodes, they're all hooked. And my hurdle comes and then, like, trying to get them to get over being pissed off at me because I got them to like something. That they oh, get <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> I'll watch those first two episodes, and I know me. I'll probably watch the whole first season before I'm <laughs> done. Know. And I will never tell anyone. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll, uh, I'll just send you. I'll send you a tweet one day that says "bro hoof?" question mark And you'll oh. direct message me, bro hoof. <laughs> oh, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> nicely, nicely said. Maybe one of these days. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess uh, I don't know if you guys got the chance to watch that video. But um, um, what kind of brony are you? Uh, a creative brony, a hipster brony, or a moderate brony? I, I should throw that out there uh, to 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 Eric and uh, Devin. Uh, Devin, you can go first on this mm -hmm. one. Uh, I'm not sure what they mean by hipster brony, <laughs> but <laughs> I'd probably say that I'm a mixture of moderate and creative brony. Oh, nice, nice. I definitely, I definitely know you on uh, on the creative side. That's for certain. Um, but uh, Eric, man, uh, uh, what, what, which one would you define yourself as? I would probably be, uh, I would probably be casual and lurker brony. Like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I don't, I don't generally uh, go to Equestria Daily or any of the other uh, My Little Pony websites. I mostly keep with 4chan because there's, it's an image board, and I like having a lot of pictures because they're pretty. Mm -hmm. um, I generally don't get involved with discussions with the fandom about things. I do though. I would guess I would call myself kind of like a casual brony because I, I stay involved with the fandom by watching a specific YouTube series. Mm -hmm. uh, call, called Bronies React, um, and it's oh. by a gentleman named uh, AC Race Race Best. And um, what he does is he he'll find specific major events in the fandom, and he'll get people to react Bronies to react to them. Mm -hmm. And it's like the season finales. It's it's specific episodes. It's just the Equestria Girls movie. Me and Devin actually watched that Bronies React last night. And so if something big happens, he'll generally make a Bronies react to that big event, and that's how I kind of stay up to date. Besides just watching the show, so. <laughs> So I'm probably like a casual lurker, like a meta brony. You watch meta the brony. Bronies. Yeah, we watch the bronies. We're in, we are we are, <laughs> we are a part of them, and we are separate all at once. <laughs> separate, but, <laughs> separate but equal. That's crazy. Separate but equal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see we got a tweet here. Um, it's sent in by uh, Arbiter uh, Robert Hayes. He writes, uh, "Okay, guys, how about this? Do you think po the pony fandom might have a chance of running through the Sonic cycle? Uh, I'm, what is the Sonic cycle? Do you guys know?" Uh, it becomes an obscure and horrible video game series oh, that nobody likes anymore. Uh, damn! <laughs> I, I'm aware of the fandom being sort of interesting. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to put it. I, I I I don't know what to say on it. I'll be honest with you. Like I I, I that, that like I think that's where 
uh, where I'm kind of siding with Silverall, just kind of just being completely ignorant of what's going on here. It's just like I just like the times I hear people complain are like the only times that I'm aware of the fandoms. That's kind of it. Like I, I like maybe someone could explain better. Um, if I had to guess. If Hasbro is continuing to do like what they're doing with Transformers, where let they let them go three seasons and they have a movie and they might have a fourth season, that kind of a cycle, um, and then they bring something new into it, um, I don't think they're going to because they're going into season four, and I think Hasbro's normal limit is three seasons and then they reboot it into something else. But um, I think what they're talking about is like if the series keeps going or if it like goes through a new reiteration and the fandom just sticks with it because they liked what it was what the original uh property was about like the original my little pony friendship is magic mm -hmm. but then if they make like a reboot series or something i don't know i as long as hasbro understands that the fandom is paying attention which they they do they do that very very well and as long as they keep the right set of writers and creative people behind my little pony no i don't think it's going to go through any type of sonic cycle but if they do decide to end Friendship is Magic and they do decide to make a new version of My Little Pony that doesn't have anything to do with the original, I think that's when it's just going to just crash out and become another Hasbro cartoon on the hub that doesn't have that same buzz behind it like My Little Pony did. Mm -hmm. So that, that's my estimation for it. Well, I never enjoyed ponies as a kid. I only enjoy this phenomenon now because of exactly the people that are involved and what they're doing with their show. And so if this franchise ever died out and it came back later, but it didn't have that same je ne sais quoi that it has now, no, I'm not going to. Yeah. Man. Well, um, I, 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 we, we, I guess, teased about it earlier, but um, what are you guys' thoughts on the movie? Um, I, <laughs> I, 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 is the series done, by the way? Are, are, uh, is it on hiatus? No, it is, it is coming back. In, if you go to manliestbrony.com, there's actually a countdown. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Writing this down. <laughs> and I believe it's in 76 <laughs> He's great. His name is Dusty Cat. He's this really cool guy. He's got this big old manly mustache, uh -huh. and he does a he does a weekly YouTube weekly podcast about bronies, and it's called Stay Brony, my friends. Stay Brony. He's the manliest. <laughs> he's the manliest brony in the world. And he's a really cool guy. Holy uh, shit. <laughs> he does. He does. He's 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 a very creative brony. He does his own music. He does his podcast. Podcast. He's really involved in the fandom. Mm -hmm. But uh, on his on his website, me and Devin found this last night. There's a countdown. It's in 70, 76 days and like seven hours or something like that. Oh. Uh, will be will be the beginning of season four. Um, now this is probably going to like go over a lot of people's minds, but or over people's heads. But at the end of season three. Uh, this was one of the first big bitch fests that the fandom ever had, was they decided to make the main character, Twilight Sparkle, into something called an alicorn, which is uh -huh. a combination of Pegasus and Unicorn. Mm -hmm. Orig originally in the series, there were three different um, versions of ponies. Earth ponies, which are just normal horses, unicorns, and Pegasus, Pegasi. Um, and then only, only Princess Celestia, the queen that brings the sun and the moon and the earth into orbit, um, <laughs> <laughs> only, only her and Princess Luna were uh, alicorns. They had all the power, and they're all magical, and they're kings and queens and shit. But then they introduced a third princess out of nowhere. That was season two's finale. And at the end of season three, they made Twilight Sparkle and Alicorn. So apparently, she's the super strong, powerful, freaking sorceress now that like <laughs> nobody knows what's going to happen with her in this next season. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, Equestria Girls is the in-between of Season 3 and 4. And, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So it's like that? It's not, uh, it's not all that good? Or is it, like, just, like, is it, is it non-canon? I mean, what, what's, how, what's the how, deal? How well received was it? What's the controversy, man? I want to hear this shit. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not so much of a controversy. I think some of the, the main fan base that are adults looked at it, and they got a really huge wake-up call from Hasbro saying, yes, we support, you know, all of our adult fans, but we also need to still make stuff for kids. Mm -hmm. And little girls love Bratz dolls. And like I said, this is kind of based on uh, Galaxy Girls a little bit uh, that Lauren Faust is working on. So this really wasn't intended for adults at all. And I think it annoyed a lot of fans because they expect, like all fans do, that they're not a tertiary fan base, that they must be the primary one. Mm -hmm. And so they're just a little butthurt for no reason. 
Well, what well, what happens in the actual movie? I'm, I'm not going to go into the plot. I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. But basically, uh, Twilight Sparkle has to go into another dimension to get her crown back. One of the elements of harmony. One of her her morpher, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, <laughs> when she goes through this when she goes through this different dimension, she ends up becoming a human, a kind of human with purple skin and <laughs> has like ridiculously long legs. But she doesn't. She's not a horse anymore. She's a full blown human, mm-hmm. kinda. And so she has to go to high school, and she gets to meet all of her human equivalent bo- pony friends, like Fluttershy is a human and all that. Um, and what I think sparked it was this, this uh, in the creative brony um, world, there's this drive for people to make human versions of ponies. Right, and there are there are a lot of really amazing interpretations of what the ponies would look like as humans. But then, unfortunately, you get more into the creepier side where they start making kind of like half humans, half ponies, and then you get them naked, half ponies, half humans, and then it just gets into the creepy world. So where they saw uh, so many people creating these human versions of ponies, they decided to do that, and then they target it towards teenage girls because it's set in the high school and blah blah blah. Um, so I guess the main thing that like that kind of bothered everyone was the fact that the there were songs in it, you know, because My Little Pony has really great songs in it, great mm-hmm. musical bits, but they really weren't that good compared to the other ones. Um, the story was kind of stretched out a little bit, kind of getting into like a film critique here. Um, the animation quality was okay. The story was okay. It was all just kind of okay. And this was the My Little Pony movie. Like this was in theaters, you know. And to me, there was only really two really interesting spots. Pinkie Pie making the Transformers noise. Oh, <laughs> was kind <what>? of awesome. <laughs> she was ta- at the very beginning. She was excited about like being able to go in a different universe, and she scrunched herself up into a box. And to get out of her little box form, she actually went and transformed out. That's so, crazy. Yeah, so a little cool there. Little nod. Yeah, but uh, it, it was basically just kind of like it was mediocre, and so it could have been worse. You know, that's what the main thing has been. It was just not what we were used to, you know? So It didn't have that same spirit that Lauren Faust brought with the rest of it. It was yeah. clearly a really big toy commercial for doll-shaped ponies. Yep. Yeah. And that's and so that's like what Devin said. It was a wake-up call. We were like, hey, this was a movie about... A, it was a movie toy commercial instead of a well-written toy commercial movie. Mm-hmm. But So it, it's... You got people that are going to bitch. It's the internet. Everyone's going to bitch. So even bronies were bitching about this movie before <laughs> it was made, when it was in theaters, when it was out of theaters. But you can find the whole thing on YouTube and watch it for yourself. So to make your own conclusions to it. But to us, to me and Devin, it gets a gigantic two, a uh, big meh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, 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 would, I, would, I would probably equate it to something with the Gundam community and uh, probably um, the um, the the Gunpla Builders oh, little yeah, yeah. OBA thing. Because mm-hmm. like you forget, like it's you forget it's still a giant toy commercial for kids. Like despite it being about war and shit. And now with the war and shit, yeah. And now with the current like the new uh, that Build Fighters uh, series that's coming out, and people obviously like every cycle they go through, like it's it's gonna be shit at first. Uh huh. Um, I, I could see how like the like I can equate that to I guess what people have seen is like, oh yeah, I forgot this is still a children's show for kids trying to sell these toys. Mm-hmm. So at, I, at I, its I core, could, at its core, and like. <laughs> I guess people like fandoms not re- like are kind of blind to that. They're like, no, no, it's for serious guys. This is serious business, and I see this with the Tokusatsu community too, where mm-hmm. like they forget this is a children's show that is aired at Sunday morning for kids. There are literally commercials where hey, little Japanese children are wearing their little feety pajamas with the Power Rangers <laughs> on them, <laughs> and and people think that these are like dark tales of like. Uh, of like fighting and all kinds of stuff. It's like, dude, no, calm down. <laughs> you're making, you're thinking way too hard about this shit. <laughs> it's 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 just that like that drive that a lot of fandoms get that like they want that dark version of whatever it is that they like, and they think that that would make it a thousand times better. Now, I can tell you for one thing, if they made a, they did make a dark version of My Little Pony, not official, but fandom, and it's called Cupcakes. Mm-hmm. And it it it, it uh, did. Did you watch it, Devin? Or did you uh, read it? Describe it a little bit. Huh? Describe a little bit. I'm not sure. Uh, Pinkie Pie kidnaps Rainbow Dash and begins to slowly take her apart. 
No, oh. I did not. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> it was a very it was a very early fanfic that came up, and it was kind of like in the form of a creepy pasta, and it's called Cupcakes, and Pinkie Pie basically slowly disembowels Rainbow Dash, oh, and so geez. there's there, there's been people's like YouTube iterations, fanfics, like live action iterations of it, <laughs> like they've kind of like grown from it from My Little Pony. <laughs> That is crazy. <laughs> well, like Ooh. even even in the uh, like creative aspects of My Little Pony, the the episode where Discord, the guy voiced by um, I can't pronounce his name. What, what was it? Uh, Adam. Oh, 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 John Delancey. Yeah. Yes, that character Discord. There was a, a lot of pony uh, music that was created that basically was an alternate universe where Discord won instead of where Discord was defeated, mm -hmm. and it was a lot of like. You know, uh, it, the, the world is chaotic. You know, I'm the last pony alive. It's just, it was people just creating these really dystopian songs, all based on this episode of My Little Pony, where what if the bad guy won? Mm -hmm. And just that's what what happens. Something happens in the series, and they take it off in their own different directions and create their own music and uh, pony music videos and everything like that. And that was part of the creative pony aspect in that one video you showed. Well, shit. I, 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 I would have never saw that coming. <laughs> Period. Um, I, I do want to add that um, uh, Robert had added, because uh, like, Twitter you know, is limited with its characters, but he said, um, to clarify, and I, you might have saw this, he said, I guess what I mean um, is becoming fragmented and argumentative like the Gundam fandom and such, but um, you guys definitely went into that. But he also asks, um, do you think that Butt Stallion from Borderlands 2 might be a reference... <laughs> To Brony slash MLP, um, I, I don't even know what he's talking about. But uh, do you guys know what he's talking about? Well, <laughs> well, do you see this pony? It's made of diamonds. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. The problem is you never see Butt Stallion until like the most recent DLC. So, oh, and that's not even a spoiler. Shit. Oh shit! Thanks, uh, bro. Butt Stallion. And to, but to what extent? I'm not gonna say. Oh, okay. That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Sixer Mason. He writes, uh, Rule 34 cannot be stopped. I, I guess in regards to the My oh, Little no. Pony movie and oh, making the ponies awful. humans. <laughs> wow, that's, that's also the thing about the Sonic community. That's what I was oh, talking about. God. Oh, God. Oh. Oh God, Rule Thirty Four. For those that don't, don't know, look it up because I ain't about to explain that shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but um, I turn the mic over to Eric because Eric, you had some things you had written down that you wanted to uh to cover. Uh, yeah, I guess I just wanted to um looking at my notes here, just trying to find like a, a channel of, of of discussion here. Mm -hmm. Um, like me and Devin were having a conversation about like what is it from within the fandom that we can point at and say that aspect of the fandom is kind of what's giving the rest of us a bad uh, example, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And we were able to look at the actual show itself, and we realized that within even the show itself, that it's got a little bit of kind of reverse sexism. And that's not even a term that I really talk about that often, because that's, like I said, that's not how my brain thinks. That's more like how Devin thinks. But I was even able to notice that <laughs> there is no prominent male character in this series, mm -hmm. like, at all. There's Spike, the little dragon dude, who's kind of like an assistant slash pet to Twilight Sparkle um, and secretary. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and basically the uh, the the musical bits are really entertaining, mm -hmm. but even like later on down the road, some of the music doesn't really have as much emphasis behind it as it did the earlier episodes. It's kind of like the, the one guy that they have writing it. Um, David, uh, duh, 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 I got his name written down here, um, uh, who wrote most of the songs. It's starting to sound like he's kind of losing emphasis on the songwriting. Mm -hmm. uh, we're able to look at the people who were kind of like furries, and we kind of realize that when most people think of creepy My Little Pony fans, they think that they're getting off to like brony porn and stuff like that. And we're, <laughs> we were kind of realizing that those people were already there that were into furries and stuff like that and they've unfortunately just kind of like melded into our fandom because they They're like everyone's it. fandom somewhere yeah everywhere like i was telling him about how like in pokemon there is just so much just pokemon porn of rapidash getting raped by charizard or whatever it was oh. yeah it's there's female there's half human v female versions of Gallade and charizard and all these other characters and it's just it's everywhere and it's just it's disgusting because it's just like there's nothing sexualized about this show or these characters other than the fact that they're girls you mm -hmm. know um uh 
like the two there's two other main character um, kind of main characters that are guys named snips and snails right. every episode that they show up they're basically minions every time <laughs> <laughs> new bad guy shows up snips and snails is there being the bulk and skull of this series <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> not even that good of a Hulkin skull. I, I don't know if they're doing it because it's a girl series, but they do have a very unfortunate way of their handling male characters, like Soaps and Snails. They're doing very much the whole boys have cooties, the dumb and grody. You know, they don't know anything. And then the only other male characters, like Spike, he's he's looked down upon. He's eternally in the friend zone. And then so far, we're the only other uh, male characters they've shown is either just a purely a love interest and there's no character depth. So that, that is something that I'm a little disappointed in with all the, the benchmarks and all the things that the show has overcame. I wish they would be a little more sensitive to representing men. And even when they did introduce a character that was a male that kind of had more character development to him, they just magically made him appear. Um, in the end of season two, there was this like big hyped up royal wedding that they were talking about. And so none of the brony fandom was like, who's getting married? Who's getting, who the fuck's getting married? And we kept seeing this pink alicorn and this blue pony or blue uh, unicorn. And we're like, well, who the fuck are these people? Mm -hmm. um, the, set, the episode starts very beginning and Twilight Sparkle's like, my brother's getting married. And we're like, who? You had a brother? <laughs> 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 they just magically appeared him and so he they're like oh well here's the relationship we had when we were younger here's the, the they made an awesome song about the relationship so i guess we could we could forgive him for that mm -hmm. but even then he just appeared he was there for the episode he just did his thing and then after that he's really not talked about that much you um, feel that same quote of boys are either they're they're there to antagonize you, or they're there because you need a love interest. That's that's what boys like the role serves in My Little Ponies. Right. So so even then they can't, they can't even they can't even like they they role reversed everything from the boys shows where they only had girl characters to be love interests or to be just background fodder to where they reversed it on, on dudes. And I just thought that was that was kind of funny. Um, there's even, uh, uh, but there's even a couple of great things about the show that I definitely wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, the background that knocking is my cat in the window. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Your cat does that too. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> um, is the fact that uh, Hasbro broke like a thousand network norms by allowing. Uh, free uploading of all their stuff to YouTube and live streams to happen with no like objection. Really? Um, when they first started the hub, it was, they took over um, discovery kids mm -hmm. and only really people that had uh, satellites and like really super de duper extended cable had uh, discovery kids. So they realized mm -hmm. that they were getting these shows out and that the brony thing was starting up, but they also knew that they didn't have that big of a f actual cable fan base yet. Not a lot of people were getting this channel. Absolutely. So they came to the conclusion that, if they allowed the free streaming, the free uploads, that they could get international fans, they could get national fans, they could get more people getting into their show by allowing the episodes to go up. Soon after that, though, they went to iTunes, so if they actually wanted to make money, you could buy an episode of iTunes, but then they also allowed it to go on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, even to this day, um, they're completely fine with all of the fandom creating, all of the fan art, all of the uh, fan music, uh, asking for you know Twilight Sparkle to be in their podcast, stuff like that. They're fine with all of that. Yeah. But um, they, but they only really had to do one thing, and this this was uh, involving something that you're in with uh, Soulbro. Yes, I, is, and I wanted to ask you about that, but go ahead. Yeah, so we'll we'll have this turn to a leeway into that here in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a fan there was a fan project called uh, My Little Pony Fighting is Magic, mm -hmm. in which they were they were going to take a fighting engine and create it with My Little Pony characters. Unfortunately, even at that point, it almost got to Evo, right? Yeah, like almost that, did. Okay. Almost made it into Evo, and Hasbro was like, sorry guys, this is too far, we have to shut it down. The great thing, though, is that at the moment that the production company that was doing uh, Fighting as Magic was putting up onto their Facebook page and on their Twitter page, uh, Hasbro has kindly asked us to cease and desist. Two minutes later, Laura Faust on Twitter uh, tweeted the people that were doing Fighting as Magic and said, hey, let's get together and do something. Oh. So as soon as one door was shut, another door was opened up thanks to the community of My Little Pony. Mm-hmm. And so soon, uh, me and um, Doctor was talking about this, 
Soon there will actually be a completely pseudo original fighting game coming out based off the Fighting is Magic engine, but with less copyrighted characters probably this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, 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 the, I think the Skullgirls Kickstarter was also yes. probably a factor in that too. It was. Um, I remember Mike Z, the guy who's uh, one of the creators of Skullgirls, he he was raising money for um, and Kickstarter. It's Kickstarter is uh, Doc and Mention. <laughs> And um, he had mentioned that if they reach a certain point in the in the donations, he will gladly give them the the fighting game engine that uh, Skullgirls works on to Main Six, the developers of uh, Fighting is Fighting is Magic, for free. He'll give them their fighting engine, and they, that fighting engine in, in Skullgirls is amazing. That yeah. um, the engine that runs that game and how the combos connect and how the characters play and all that stuff is really well done. So when he went out and said that, because he was so impressed. With how well made fighting its magic was, and that they already went through hell developing a fighting engine for Skullgirls, and it's been well lauded by the fighting game community. It's like, look, you guys can have this if we re meet this goal, and they met that goal within a few days of him saying that, and so that's going to be going into fighting its magic. So I'm actually interested in playing it because it's got the Skullgirls engine incorporated in the game. So I, I might just give it a shot <laughs> when the game well, comes out. There's going to be more charged characters now. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Mike Z approved. Oh my I, I gosh. don't. I don't normally play fighters, but when that game comes out, so bro, if it's in some sort of a of a of a internet thing that we can somehow stream together, I will join you with Fighting Is Magic and we'll play that. There Apparently, there there is a leaked alpha version of Fighting Is Magic, like the pr before they got shut down somewhere oh, yeah. on the internet. Oh yeah, you can uh, probably find it through methods. All <laughs> um, oh, those methods. All <laughs> those. <laughs> but it's out there. But um, Eric, man, any anything else that you wanted to point out, or any any other subjects you wanted to talk about um, that you had in your um? Uh, let me look at my notes here real quick. Let's see. Um, even at Botcon uh, this year, the big Transformers convention. Oh yeah. Um, I took I put a picture of it up onto uh, my fa onto the, the Gundam Facebook page. Um, IDW, the comic company that's doing the majority of the My Little Pony comics, did a crossover poster where Optimus Prime uh, is holding Pinkie Pie. I uh, saw who's that. Wearing, <laughs> who's wearing cardboard <laughs> boxes painted up as Optimus Prime, and he's kind of scratching his head like I don't know what's going on here. But um, I was talking to my buddy Mike, who every year goes to Botcon, no matter where it is. And I was asking him, like, how much, like, My Little Pony stuff is starting to show up. The the first year, unfortunately, there was just one unfortunate guy who did a full pony outfit, like, almost kind of, like, <laughs> creepy pony outfit um, as Rainbow Dash. And he went to the Hasbro Transformers panel and asked them, and asked them when are they going to make more pony toys. Oh, the man. One, uh... Now, this was like two, two, two years ago, three years ago when the show first started. This year, they have actually started introducing more and more brony stuff slowly into it because it's Hasbro. So they're like, we, we know the bronies are here and they also like Transformers. So as you've even in like the uh, the show uh, uh, clip show, you see that like Transformer Rainbow Dash Starscream and everything. Um, they're starting to realize that their fandoms are crossing and that's. Nothing but pure profit, baby. You can make money off of ponies and off Transformers fans. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> one shall stand, one shall trot. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Six and Mason. That was his joke. Shout out to Six. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and I guess uh, the last thing I'll bring up is... The references. There are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of just amazing little background jokes all throughout uh, My Little Pony. The the best one that I can bring up is in season two. There was an episode where Rainbow Dash thought she should become a superhero. Mm -hmm. So, or actually, no, I'm sorry. There was an episode where Rainbow Dash got an ego, and like like what Doctor said, Rainbow Dash is the character that generally has to has the most lessons taught to her because of how headstrong she is. <laughs> so she ended up she ended up saving a baby's life, and unfortunately, it got to her head. So she started like trying to save the day everywhere. So her friends decided that we needed to bring her down to Earth. So they created this character called the Mysterious Mayor Duel, and uh, it was a complete reference to Batman the Animated Series. Really? There were signs oh, yeah. in the there were signs in the there were signs in the background that had the Mayor Duel and her outfit and everything, the black hat and the uh, cloak and everything, and mm -hmm. it looked had the red background and everything, just like the Batman Animated Series uh, logo. Wow. Um, I think there was even like a song kick where you actually hear the doo 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 like for a quick second in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
there was a uh, uh, an apparently a uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference in one of the episodes about uh, uh, sportsmanship. Uh, two of the ponies, uh, Rainbow Dash and a- Applejack, are having a race against one another to see who's better. And Twilight Sparkle, the nerd, she shows up and she's like, I'm going to be a part of this race too. And they're laughing at her, making fun of her. And they ask her, well, how did you learn to run? Did you learn in a book? And she pulls up this book that says Pony's Guide to Running. And it's a callback to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because her <laughs> racing number is number 42. 42. I was, gonna, I was <laughs> just going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> man, it sounds like the show is chock loaded with all sorts of references, man. Um, dang. It, 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 if anything, I, I, I've learned a lot in today's episode of the show. And um, I expected to. I was, hop- I was hoping I would. I, I was hoping I would at least be somewhat enlightened. And I, I feel like I've been um, baptized almost. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Devin, anything you wanted to, 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 to add or share in, 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 or anything we may have not have covered? That, um, you- uh, just yeah. that if, if anyone's not, well, I mean, I'm sure everyone at this point is familiar with what My Little Ponies is. Uh, but if you haven't watched uh, Friendship is Magic, and you're, you're on the edge about it, you know, your friends aren't looking, so you don't have to worry about it, go try it out. I mean, you might like it. And for that matter, try try things that, you know, you think you may not like uh, just because of some particular thing. There's a comic out now called Artifice that has, uh, it's, the predominant characters in it are gay, but it's a really awesome, like, future, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, it's not apocalyptic, it's a dystopian, there we go. A uh, future where people's genetics have actually been so uh, easily pinpointed that you can be a designer person. Like if you want to make sure that your kids don't have any diseases or if they have a particular hair color, mm-hmm. you can have, you know, people just made, tailor made. And so there's a faction of people that uh, have decided to rebel against that and they're their own natural and people hate them for it. And one of those genes that people decide to keep uh, in that community instead of get rid of is homosexuality. So you get to see uh, what it's like being a gay person in a futuristic world. Uh, you get to see uh, a cyborg try to deal with who has an extremely advanced AI trying to deal with what it's what it's like actually having feelings and uh, the the social interactions that you have to deal with whenever people uh, don't want to treat you like you have uh, humanity. So mm-hmm. this is really deep. And I think uh, there are some people that are going to pass over for stories like that just because of preconceived notions of, oh, there are gay people in it, or, oh, this this is for girls. Yeah. Go out there and look for stuff and try it. You never know. I wholeheartedly agree, man. Thank thank you for sharing that and uh, and, 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 and enlightening us. <laughs> Letting us you know. Dropping gems on them is what I like to say. Dropping gems. But, um... Doc, any any uh, any questions you might have had? I've been to ask you that earlier uh, about the Brody scene or uh, any anything you wanted to uh, to to go further into about this. I mean, we we kind of covered a good amount of it. I, I, I would, I mean, something of the gray of like, what do you, what is like the thing that even you're like, why is this a part of the fandom? Or like, mm-hmm. I, I would assume that's like, I know we answered that question to some degree, but I think the very discussion was that was it was it was discussed. So it's and even. Yeah. I'm, I do wonder, like, is there anything else? You're like, I'm like, yeah, it's great, but uh, why is this here? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it, it's it's always a problem with any fandom to where you've got those people that take anything that you like and apply Rule Thirty Four. Unfortunately, with us, Rule Thirty Four also involves bestiality, oh, so it's <laughs> just a whole extra <laughs> element to it. Okay, bestiality is usually a thing you try to get out. Of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's never good to see that. <laughs> no, but man, it, it has been an enlightening discussion. Um, many thanks to my panel. As you guys can check out here, I'm at a, a handy dandy little panel here that shows a lot of the URLs. Oh, I meant to ask you, uh, uh, Eric. Uh, I sent you a message on on Twitter, but I, I don't think you had the chance to, to send me a message back. What do you, did you make a short URL for your um for your stream page for Pokemon Soccer Theater? Oh no, no, I haven't. You I, never did? I, I, I've never done that. No. Um, due to multiple hard drive failures and everything, I'm actually on a brand new laptop now, so I am planning oh. on bringing that stream back very, very soon. Um, so yes, yes, I do plan on streaming there again soon. So well, if you want to pitch my stream, go ahead. <laughs> I will. I will. I will. I'll put it right here. I I got the uh, the nice long address there for people who want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to go to that, or they could search for Pokemon Saga Theater on live stream and find you and um and follow you there. 
Um, but uh, anything else you wanted to plug, Eric, before uh, before we move on uh, to Devin? I guess um, I, I don't. I, I personally don't have any uh, um, like. Uh, like tv show or that or like podcast myself or anything um the only thing i would recommend is that if you do give the first two episodes a try Mm -hmm. um that's all we really you should do if you don't like it cool if you do like it follow me on twitter talk to me about bronydom talk to me about other (laughs) things you should get into i'll i'll introduce you to the to the awesome side of being a pony fan um but also at the same time uh even though i like my little pony I actually personally put like Adventure Time above My Little Pony and Pokemon above My Little Pony. Wow! So even though it's a great show, it's not the best thing ever. But with that, I still got to give it its respect for like everything we've brought up tonight. Um, all of the effort and work and everything it's put into it is just—it's been amazing. But uh, um, don't make fun of people just because they do something that you don't understand. That's probably the the Mr. Rogers life lesson I'll put at the end of this is just if you don't understand it, don't hate it, learn about it and get that educated hate, then you'll be all right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> educated hate. If you walk away from this with anything, it's educated hate. Now you know. That's right. And, and now you know why. And no one is half the hating. <laughs> Because I would rather hear somebody come up to me and say, here's the reason why My Little Pony is stupid and actually point out things that are dumb in the show other than just saying, you're a grown man watching My Little Pony. I would say, Sailor Moon, motherfucker. Okay, that's, that's what my fucking defense right there. The Sailor yeah. Moon defense. <laughs> like, I, I would I would usually point them to Pretty here at this point. Like, yo, check this shit out. It's surprisingly good. It's like, how dare a grown man like a goddamn cartoon? Oh my god, we live in 2013. People like cartoons when they're grown men. <laughs> it, it's it's funny to see that in like the animated community. It's like, yo, you already watch cartoons at this point, and you don't even like me saying it's called cartoons. Exactly. And, and it's funny. Oh, yeah. It's like, you can't really make fun of My Little Pony fans when you look at half the stuff you're into, and you can find many people who would look upon your fandom in the same manner. So... Uh, you know, it can be re- the, the it can be easily reversed on you, and I understand the defense is like, well, the demographic is not meant for them, and blah 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 blah. It's like, well, yeah, but Gundam, really, the demographic isn't meant for grown ass men like me who don't buy the models. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> One Piece isn't a ki- is a kids show too. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, dude, it, like a lot of stuff I'm into does not apply to me at all, and I just get enjoyment out of it because it's there to be enjoyed, and uh, and I dig it, and um. I, I really have no excuse in the matter. You know, I, you, you can branch out of your comfort zone and enjoy something that is not meant for you as long as it's not in an, in an inappropriate way, which some people do it in an inappropriate way, but you know, what what can you fucking do? <laughs> 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 but uh, Devin, man, uh, anything, uh, any, uh, if you could let people know about your website and uh, your comics um, and, and how they can uh, reach you and, um, and, and, and what pages they can go to visit. Uh, definitely hit up pinkdollarcomics.com. Uh, we're working on a few different series, but our, our, our heart and soul, the main series we're working on, is called Autumn Rose. Mm-hmm. We actually have the entire prologue up right now. Chapter 1 will be starting this fall. Uh, we do have a ton of concept artwork that you can only see on our DeviantArt. Uh, so if you want to see maybe a sneak peek of some of the characters before they actually go live in the pages, you can check them out there on our DeviantArt page. Uh, but you know, in the spirit of checking out things that are different and new, definitely uh, come check out Autumn Rose. It's, uh, it's a series that switches back and forth between two parallel stories. Uh, the main story is about a large group of uh, orphan boys that live in a, a European monastery in the Edwardian era. Uh, the two main characters are dealing with kind of a masculinity crisis. One particular boy is uh, being a victim of bullying. The other boy is the uh, bully. Uh, and as the these two boys are dealing with the concepts like masculinity, uh, their, their sexual identity, and growing up, uh, they they seek the guidance of one of the, the elder priests there, and he actually reads a, a storybook to them, which is where the p- other parallel story comes into play. As these boys are being read this uh, story from the storybook, they're actually vicariously kind of living out their own um, problems through the storybook. So you'll see characters in this uh, fantasy setting, I mean high fantasy, like swords, dragons, magic fighting, uh, that have the exact same facial features and stuff as the boys in the monastery because they're kind of sorting out their problems with that story. And the uh, the entire comic will be uh, a back and forth between the boys in the monastery dealing with uh, said their issues and growing up, and then this fantastical storyline uh, that's being read to them through the storybook. It's kind of like never-ending story. 
What? Mm. That's awesome, dude. Man. It's, uh, man, that sounds like an adventure, dude. I, maybe I should branch out of my comfort zone and, and read that as well. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will tell you, though, the prologue mm -hmm. is a little bit uh, a little bit cliche. It does seem romantic. The, uh, the monastery storyline is going to have a slightly softer art style, and it is going to seem a little bit romantic. But then whenever you actually get to the chapters where, like uh, chapter one, for example, it's going to be pretty violent. Uh, pretty dark. It's going to be really gritty. It's done by the same artist, but you'll definitely see a shift in art style. We actually have something coming up in Chapter 1. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, I'm actually referring to this event that's going to happen in our next chapter as a red wedding. Oh, so, no. Uh, it gets pretty dark. <laughs> Damn, well, well, action is coming. <laughs> that's right. Action is on its way. I hope, hope, hope some people have, happen to avoid that wedding if they can help, <laughs> if they can help it. <laughs> Maybe they'll keep their heads, but uh, no problem. Uh, you guys can also see the um, the all the URLs that I, I put up here on the screen for Pink Dollar Comics. They at pinkdollarcomics.com, also pinkdollarcomics.deviantart.com. And I gotta say, if, if you're you're the main artist, right? Um, I came up with uh, the characters, the universe, the world, mm -hmm. uh, and then I also work with an additional writer who takes this massive amount of uh, paperwork that I give him. He helps me sort it out and put it into uh, a storyline that can be better enjoyed by my readers and then that goes over to one of our artists uh, mm -hmm. she actually uh, is living over in the philippines she'll do our artwork for us our storyboards and it's a little bit back and forth between us and the artists and then once everything's ready we send over to our web developer well that's that's pretty phenomenal i, I, I look at the artwork and it's like it's very well very well depicted and uh, my hat's off to you for the production you guys have put into these to these stories man that's that's pretty amazing uh, it's, not, it's it's good for independent people to get out there and, and do their own things to make their own mark, and I'm I'm glad to see that you're doing that, man. That's pretty cool. I definitely recommend people try uh, checking out some original English language uh, manga out there. There's a lot of it. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it's not the best quality, but it's definitely out there. So check it out. There's a lot of uh, manga and stories that are only being produced out here in North America by English speaking artists. Right on, right on. I, I'll, have to, I'll have to delve more into uh, English manga then and see what's uh, see what's going on in that aspect. I used to buy a few back in the day um, when when the manga boom was going on, but um, I haven't even thought about it as of recently. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's something that a lot more people should check it out. Check out because there's a lot of great uh, domestic artists out there that draw on that style, and they should definitely be um, noticed and, um, and 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 paid attention to. So I would definitely give that a shot. And um, I, I noticed that uh, Saber had written, and now I just lost the actual message. Saber, Saber asks, uh, so Sobro, will you watch more MLP due to this panel? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sitting here, I'm sitting here at the edge of my seat wondering, is he going to watch the first two episodes on a live stream, maybe? You, 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 know, you know what? Uh, here, here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll do this. I, uh, this. This hopefully will not kill me, but uh, I will sit down with Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he and I will sit down and watch the first Ooh. first four episodes of My Little Pony on a future stream, and Ooh. we'll do we'll do it live on stream so I can get my damn reactions on on stream, and then maybe cut it up and have a, a best of put on YouTube. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll, I should we'll, sit down and show you Pretty Cure. Oh my I'll, gosh! I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> talk about like different shit, but I'll, I'll I'll try to cherry pick which are some good episodes. You know what? You know, let's do it this way. Um, Eric keeps talking about the first two episodes of My Little Pony are good to watch. Um, then we could do the first two episodes of Pretty Cure. And then um, and we'll do this all around the time that the new Sailor Moon show starts. And then we'll do the first two episodes of the new Sailor Moon show. And we'll do it all in the same session. So it's like six That'll episodes. That, that sounds poetic. And I that will, sounds amazing. And then I will overdose on all the saccharin. <laughs> 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 and uh, I'm sure we just lost viewers off of that statement alone. But uh, <laughs> Saber says the birth of a the birth of a brony on stream. I freaking um, tsunami will start calling me so brony like he has oh, the best. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, oh my god! We start calling you so brony Ryu. <laughs> oh my god! Just shoot me dead! Shoot me dead! <laughs> yeah, Hasbro to sponsor your stuff now. <laughs> this stream brought to you by Hasbro. Shit, I would love that, man. I'll fucking sell out in a heart fucking beat. Let's go. <laughs> you will get like 58,000 viewers just be like, we're going to watch the first two episodes of My Little Pony. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, what have I done? What have I done? Doc, man, anything you wanted to plug? 
Um, uh, aside from the stuff that you already have on there, the Ask Backers Anime Podcast, the best kept secret on the internet, SSAAPodcast.com. I also run Jessica and Tom a podcast. We're going to be recording an episode soon-ish. Mm-hmm. Talk about something very different when it comes to children's shows. All this children's magazine thing that's on Jump, and it's it's still not for kids. It shouldn't be for kids, but a lot of life lessons are learned there. Um, uh, you do have the tiny role there of the uh, live stream that we do on a semi-regular basis. Oh yeah, at this point, regular basis, um, where it between like depending on the day, it's always going to be something different. Uh, Mondays are usually whenever I uh, have to watch Monday Night Raw. Uh, I and whenever I get out of work, I try to cram in as much anime as I can for my Crunchyroll queue. And it's crunch time with Duck. Um, mm-hmm. Wednesdays are usually my video game nights, so you can find my Twitch channel, which is uh, usually, I think we, we just finished like playing through the story mode of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure game. Nice. The new one. nice. I was watching some uh, of your archive today, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, like I, there's still stuff I need to learn from that. Um, Thursdays, which is our um, drama nights, which we just re- finished wrapping up our um, full... Um, I guess uh, stream of the the Queen's Classroom, one of the better television series. Period. Uh, people should really check it out. It's like it's a Japanese live action thing, not based off a manga. It's an original work. It's it's actually really, really, really good show, and mm-hmm. people should really check it out. Um, uh, and uh, Thursdays, Tuesdays have been become have end up becoming our movie nights, which we, even though we're an anime podcast, we haven't been really watching that many anime movies. Um, but we're going to actually start with, um, for some reason, we're going to start with uh, The Grave of the Fireflies. I don't know why we started with that one when it, can, when it comes to anime movies. Sure, sure Jesus that. Christ, why would you yeah, start that's what, with that that's one? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I saw uh, that, and it's like, holy shit, man, we haven't even touched that shit. <laughs> uh, l- Scary luckily, stuff. Luckily, we're assholes, so we can get away with uh, <laughs> talking about we we watched a show about a, a a grown woman torture a bunch of twelve year old children. One girl peed herself in the middle of the classroom. It happened on the show. Nice. And we were cracking jokes. That's hey, the talk Japanese right there. people. That's uh, what's cracking, happening. Cracking wise, man. That's all we do. Um, uh, uh, every Sunday is um, and actually, uh, to, actually, I might as well announce since we're we're coming up since we finished the Queen's Classroom on on our Thursday show. Mm-hmm. Uh, not this weekend, but the weekend uh, the week after, I should say. Um, on Thursday, we're going to be starting the, a brand new TV show uh, uh, that uh, we also wanted to encourage people to watch called uh, Liar Game. Oh. It's Think of it like Saw, but with money. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, uh, it, 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 the, the prim- like I, I say Saw because there's a deliberate like little Torture doll. Porn? No, it's not torture porn. No, it's not. It's it's far from it. It's um, that one is actually based off of uh, off of a manga. Mm. Um, but it's it's one of those things where when adapt- uh, when and there's when you watch a lot of Japanese dramas, there's a good amount of them that are based off of manga, uh, or light novel stuff. This one, uh, they managed to take it and just go full ham with it and just go off the wall nuts with, with what it does. The dire- whoever directed the thing is just an insane, crazy person. He doesn't care about what an- camera angles are supposed to be. Uh, it, it's, it is it is hella fun if you want to see this dude uh, learning how far did he plan everything. And it turns out he planned pretty far. And just this dumb, dim-witted girl who has to tag along with him. Uh, very good show. Um, and we're going to be watching that in, in, in a few weeks uh, on Thursday. And the last thing is the Inizuma Challenge, which we do every Sunday. Oh, yeah. um, uh, which is a, a show that I've been trying to tell people about. It's, it's, it's these Japanese kids playing soccer and then they start throwing dragons at each other the <laughs> next season the, the next season they start getting stands nice and then then they have saint armor at one point uh we j- we are finishing the um arc where they are f- currently fighting a bunch of aliens that came to their planet and uh blew up their school so they have to beat them with soccer um that's fantastic yes okay yeah. all right <laughs> yes damn yes yeah, uh, we're finishing up that arc, and then because they realize, wait, how we're we gonna uh, how we're we gonna top aliens? Well, we're gonna go with the world tournament, which is coming up in. Um, but of course, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trust me, like this same stuff, the stands, all that stuff doesn't happen until way later. So we're kind of just get, we're at the, the weird peak of like, okay, it's crazy, but it, it's gonna get crazier after that. So I'm just kind of it's light spoilers <laughs> of like the the amount of insanity you have for this children's show. About kids playing soccer, um, and we do that every Sunday. Uh, watch a couple episodes, and it's me cracking wise as I've been advertising already. 
uh, uh, anything else, I think that's pretty much everything. So yeah, that and um, just get some podcasts, and I have a I have a bunch of other shows on our network of stuff, which I can probably advertise another day. Between dropping the X, uh, the Always Rational K-pop podcast, starting up possibly another show very soon, um, oh. a Tokusatsu related show, which is just us at real like just making fun of uh, children shows. Um, so yeah, that's all. That's all in the. That's all in the works, and um, preparing for our hundredth episode, which will be sometime in October. Man, that's oh, gonna God. be that's gonna be an epic twenty four hour long episode, man. Yeah, twenty four live podcast because we we are dumb. That- <laughs> <laughs> because we're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well said, but um, thank you very much, Varnus, for saying that this first episode was success. I- I'm not sure if it was for everybody. We, we gained some <laughs> list- viewers and we we lost some viewers, but um, thank you guys for coming out. Um, next episode, we are going to be going into uh, the whole debacle between um, uh, the internet and Ben Affleck being Batman. That's right. We're gonna be. <laughs> oh oh we're my gonna, god. We are gonna be talking about Batfleck and also the future of the DC comic book universe uh, in 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 <laughs> cinema. So um, what 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 they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing, what we're hoping to see, and all that fun stuff. I already can tell you tell you right off the bat that uh, my man Elliot our our, our Aries. I, I hopefully I'm saying his last name right, but uh, Elliot, I definitely want him on that episode because he and I talk movies all the time. So um, he reached out to me on uh, Twitter, and I've been meaning to respond to him. So if you're watching Elliot. I definitely want you to be on board for that uh, that session, and uh, everybody else will be announced uh, shortly. But uh, thank you, fellas, for joining, coming, coming, and joining me for this uh, this this first episode of Barbecue Night. Uh, many thanks to Doctor from the SSAA podcast, uh, Devin of Pink Dollar Comics, and of course Eric of just being a loudmouth. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Coming live from West Virginia, but uh, <laughs> now, now, if you'll excuse me and Devin, we gotta go get ready for the Grand Galloping Gala. There you go. Wrong, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> oh my God. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> this conversation went off the rails hours ago. But uh, <laughs> it went off the reins, you should say. Off the uh, reins, indeed. Oh, oh my good God. Night. Good night, every pony. And, oh. and we close out on that nonsense. We'll see you. <laughs> We'll see you guys later, man. Peace in the Middle East. Peace. Everybody, smile, smile, smile. Fill uh. my heart up with sunshine, sunshine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's been a lot of fun, but, well, I guess that's all. Is this not why you are here?